Well, welcome to another episode of Standard Issue Tease. No more tease. Standard Issues behind the scenes. Um, today's guest, we have a gentleman that is extremely special to this space. He is a pioneer in a lot of realms and worlds in which are very near and dear to myself. Um, he's a East Coast pioneer. He is a design pioneer. He's a skateboard pioneer. A lot of pioneer. He pioneered a lot of stuff. Thanks, man. Peace. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, he, and he traveled all the way up here from San Diego. So we are going to give him every ounce and minute and time to express and share everything that he's willing to share with us today. Um, so thank you so much, Mr. Ali Asha, for joining us this, oh, this thanks, afternoon man. or e early evening. I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah. What was, how was the track getting up here? I was mellow. Drove? Uh, no, I didn't. My, um, my car is not registered right now. Huh? So I was going to take the train. I used to commute on the train all the time. Uh, and I took the bus. Oh, I took no a way. Flix bus. Um, and it was super mellow. I felt like I was like, going to uh the playground or something or going to like philly no from way. new york like yeah, yeah, yeah. we used to take the bus yeah, for yeah, our yeah, kids yeah. the mega bus or the chinatown bus twenty dollars round right trip. Was, it yeah, has yeah. wi-fi it's super clean it has a bathroom so yeah. I, was, I got some flashbacks of, of going on bus. skate trips but the chinatown bus definitely wasn't clean <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true yeah for sure now i was really nice so i don't know and it drops you off right at the train station and then that, it's like 10 minutes in lift from the train to here where do you but, catch it at down there there's a bus stop in a parking lot right behind Union Station. In a uh, in a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's the got funniest. Like a food truck. It's kind of. I kind of want to make a documentary just about that. people traveling on hey. that bus. Uh, right, it's some kinda, inter interesting folks on. Yeah, that. it was it was a trip. Mm -hmm. A lot of students. All right. Yeah, for sure. I always forget how easy that trip is from that the train ride at least and peaceful just going from union station down to sd oh i love it uh -oh. the train's really really nice it's mm -hmm. uh it's like you can think there's wi-fi um and like you said it's really beautiful like if you get on the coast side yeah it's just serene you could i'd be like oh i'm gonna get a bunch of work done and i would just zone out uh -huh. just you know sightseeing it, it's funny being from the east coast it's like we're grow you grow up just like seeing such like raw urban shit. So I almost feel like your sense of appreciation for just like that type of scenic thing is like even more heightened, at least to oh, me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, like if you were taking the train, I mean, you know how it is. You're up and down tri-state area in the New England. Like most of what you see is like old fucking factories yeah, and stuff. Sorry yeah. about the F word, but That's old okay. factories. Yeah. Um, rivers. Know, <laughs> rivers. Dirty ass rivers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, rivers that they're trying to save. Yeah. Um, just cause there was so much industrial, yeah. you know, stuff up there. So yeah, it's considerably different. All the factories from where my mom lives at into Philadelphia now are all luxury. Lofts. They're turning into luxury lofts and condos. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty insane. It's a trip. A lot of Pittsburgh's yeah. like that right yeah. now too. Yeah. That's which is wild. cool. It's like, at least they're making use of these old buildings. It's like, I just wish the, you know, I don't know, you know, like growing up in these towns, it's like, you know what they used to be utilized for. It's like, right. wish it was still being used for that, but you know, yeah. we got a housing problem. So for sure. Yeah. I wish that a lot of the industry was still there. Um, there's a lot of shoe factories in the yeah. East coast, a lot of textile fact. I mean, just everything really. Yeah. You know, difficult to make things here. Yeah. Um, well shit, I want, this is a, this is an awesome um, experience having you on, you know, obviously I, I, I know your, I think I know your background as a fan and as a student from, for years, man, watching a lot of things that, um, you help take, you know, take shape of and contribute to. Um, so I hope there's other people that will find this equally as educational as I do, you know, just, I, it's an honor sitting with you. So I appreciate that, know. man. And honor sitting with you oh, You've done man. a lot of great I had stuff to yourself, break out bro. the new york hat i like it and i had to break out antonio's 18 east homage shout out to antonio and a, and a dub snowboard jacket which i'm sure you probably designed pretty sure damon designed oh get one. out of here yeah man. our I, our range was pretty small and so everything was really intimate uh -huh. i've worked in damon's office 
uh, we had adjacent desks. Um, so I'm 90% sure he designed that, right. but you know, we, we played off a lot of each other That's you know, cool. or played off each other a lot when we were working together. Um, it's probably one of the, like I said it the other day, like he and Ken were the best bosses I've ever had. That's sick. Um, cause they just let you, you know, now people like kind of hire you or not. It's an unfair statement. A lot of people will hire people just because they need a body mm -hmm. versus hiring somebody to do a specific job and allowing them to do the job and trusting them to do the job. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 90% of the people that they hired, that's what they hired them. They allowed them to do what they'd hired them to do. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you don't really find that a whole lot. I find. Yeah. Um, and they created this space like that was very conducive to like experimentation and creativity yeah. and if there was something they weren't fucking with they would definitely be like nah nah yeah, yeah. Like, it's cool i get it <laughs> yeah. but um and they were like real candid and up front there was yeah. nothing like passive aggressive or weird if they were like nah or ken would do the thing he'd be like if he saw that you were hyped on it he'd be like so you believe in this yeah and he'd be like i need you to prove it to me yeah. like i need you to show me i'm not getting it i'm not saying no, you know, yeah. depending because yeah. there were definitely things where he's absolutely not. And there were things where he's like, but show me why if you're hype, if you're like hyped like this and you're that geeked out on this, let me yeah. let, like, show me why. Yeah. Oh, that's um, incredible. Yeah. It was dope, man. Um, I like, uh, your yeah, bosses like that are generally like, yeah, they're, they're the raddest to me. It's like too, if you hire somebody, I always look at it like a tattoo artist. Like I'm not going to tell a tattoo artist how to tattoo. If I'm no. coming to you for a tattoo, right. I'm going to give you an idea, but the end result is what you get, you know? I maybe Absolutely. that's dicey to proceed that way, but no, but if you you've know. seen their work and you're a fan, like you're like, I want what you, you know, yeah. I'm not going to go to Mr. Cartoon and ask him for something that he yeah. doesn't do. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Like, can I get a koi fish? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, so, but that, I guess that's, the thing that uh, it stands out when I, when I look at like um, your full body of, of work over the years is like how many different areas that you were able to, um, to really like implement your expertise and, and, uh, and perspective on. And, and that's, what's really rad. Like, um, you know, obviously going back to like growing up on the East coast, you know, like and, and me learning years after the fact, be, you know, because obviously growing up in an era prior to social media is like, you know, I didn't know till years way later that how far your roots in, in New York skating actually are. And then it's like the light bulb went off, you know, and like, oh, no, Ollie, like grew up skating at the banks. Oh, yeah. You know, and like, I'm like, oh, this all makes because of your name. I always heard the name Ali Asha. Ali, right. And I never knew what you look like. I never I was like, this is who's this figure? You know what Crazy. I'm saying? So. Um, yeah. what was that like growing up in New York city, skating the banks? And that's a very broad question, but, it, yeah. um, it was, it was dope. I, you know, I always trip on, like, I always talk about like context. You'll see like context, nuance, and timeline uh -huh. are like really important things to me, especially with social media, because people will like place themselves in spaces that they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. um, and you're like, how does that work? Like, and not everybody, you know, yeah. or if you're trying to explain something like, like I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, how important, and I'll get to the growing up mm -hmm. in skating in New York, but like how important Nottis and Gons were to the evolution of skateboarding just by ollieing up over things yeah. and not just onto things. And like, and how that's like discovering fire. Yeah. Like yeah, if yeah. you were talking about like a, like an analogy between the human being, the human experience, yeah. like, and like we discovered fire or the invention of the wheel. Yeah. Right. Like, um, cause that's a building block for every trick. Yeah. Right. If you can't Ollie, you, you can't not do anything, yeah, anything yeah. now. Yeah. Or you can't do a board. I mean, you can kind of board slide on a curb, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, and so that's the period of time that I started skateboarding in, right? Like Nottis had just kind of jumped on the scene. Gons. What year you think this 84? was? 84. 84, right. Right. So I'm 14 years old. 
Uh, I grew up in Cobble Hill, Borham Hill, Brooklyn area. Uh-huh. So Bergen between fourth and fifth sandwich between Wyckoff projects and, uh, um, Gowanus projects. Are you seeing many kids skate in your neighborhood at that point? Not really. Yeah. Um, if they were, they were kind of like the prototypical some injected graffiti thing. Like they were kind of like acid rider guys, gotcha. like like long hair, headband, dolphin shorts with a frisbee under their arm. Yeah. Right? Like and I don't mean that in a derogatory no, sense. Yeah. They're skateboarders. Absolutely. They're just, it's just, it's the, you know, the beginning of the eighties is still the late seventies. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of them wrote, a lot of those dudes are like graffiti dudes, uh-huh. you know, they're like the older Andy Kessler guys. So there was a guy named, uh, Earl Russ, Earl Rusneck's brother. He wrote cancer. Uh, he skated Blake Letham, Keo skated a little bit. Um, and then but other than that, nobody, no, not a lot of kids in my neighborhood. There was a brother named, um, Corey that lived in Gowanus projects. Where do you live in Wyckoff? Uh, they're a block away from uh. each other. I don't, I think he lived in Gowanus. He skated. There's a Puerto Rican brother that started to skate a few years later that lived in Wyckoff. Um, and then my friend Stan, who was like my partner in crime, yeah. like I started skating maybe about six months to a year before he did. Um, and then, then it was just on, like yeah. it was me and him. Did um, you guys have a, was there a local shop at that point? No. Nah, there, well, so there was dream wheels, which was a shop over by, um, Washington square park. Mm. There was a shop called Larry and Jeff's and, and like a lot of, spots in the east coast it's a bike shop yeah yeah right hobby and shop so some shit like that a hobby shop yeah. or a bike shop or somebody <laughs> somebody's dad has a sport shop dude so i used to drag my mom to the hobby shop right she'd be like yo you don't want a fucking model airplane right. <laughs> like <laughs> right. i'm like no i want the board um yeah and then um so i started skating my mom rented a a, a back house from some friends in fire island um, and we would go out there on weekends. And then I met uh, a cat from Boston named Jake Burlingham, who looked like a mini Dwayne Peters. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. And he was really funny. Like, I didn't understand Indy Pride or any of that stuff yet. And he would al- he would always ride GSD boards, uh-huh. but with Indies. And GSD is a tracker board. Yeah. So, and he would think it was the funniest thing ever. Just as a joke. Just as a joke. Yeah. Um, but he skated really well. And then a, a cat from out here named Alistair McKevitt, Ally McKevitt. He's a Damn, the Indy famous. Pride was that strong back oh, then? It's, yeah, it's been deep for That's a minute. Insane. It's crazy. Um, and he would always put the GSD board out of an eyeball and he would put an Indy sticker, the little, you know, the, yeah. the Iron Cross thing in the middle of the eyeball and just chuckle to himself. That's it too was funny. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. But um, so Jake Burlingham. Allie McKevitt. Allie was like a surf dude. He's from Santa Monica, but his parents were originally from New York. Um, Paul Middleman. I've known Paul since yeah. I was 14. Oh, get out of here. Um, and Paul skated. Paul's from Brooklyn too? No. Oh. Um, Paul was from Upper Upper West Side. All right. Um, he lived in Chelsea for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if I'm wrong, Paul, sorry. That's just, I'm old. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but, uh, um, and then a guy named Greg Gomery who was more like a lacrosse player, but he uh-huh. skated, um, and he was from Jersey and I didn't have a board and there, there was like this, uh, so there's no cars out there unless they're like police cars or whatever. Uh-huh. And, um, there was a, a police cars and fire, fire, uh, fire trucks. And, uh, there was a bank in front of the fire station and we would all skate there and everybody would let me take a turn on their board. Uh, that's sick. Um, uh, and then at the end of the summer, I was like, I'm a skateboarder now. Yeah. Like it's on. And Jake, this is the illest shit ever. Like Jake handed me a box and he's like, I like, and he's younger than me at the mm-hmm. time. He's like 13 and I'm 14 at the time. Um, and he's like can't give you my skateboard, 
but like this, here's skate stuff. And he gave me like yeah. probably 10 thrashers and 10 trans worlds. Uh-huh. And then, um, a skate rock tape. He gave me one of my favorite compilations ever. It's called Rockabilly Psychosis and the Garage Disease. He gave me a VHS tape of this old 60s movie called Skater Dater. No way. Um, which is like the Hobie skate team. Um, that's like an award-winning film now. Like I need to watch this now. Uh, yeah, it's ill. Soundtrack's crazy. Um, kids are all skating barefoot, like doing like funky gorilla grip yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, with their toes. Right. And then, and he gave me like a misfits t-shirt. He just gave you like a, like, like a he scare, gave me like, like, he's, like he's a roadmap to yeah. the, everything else in skateboarding. You'll do, you'll figure the rest right. out. And, uh, and some like punk rock mixtapes that he made. And we were all listening to like hip hop and punk rock at the same time anyway. And, um, so when I got home, my mom's an art historian, art educator and textile conservator. Right. And so I was really bad at sports. I was like an awkward kid. Um, really didn't have like a lot of hand-eye coordination, but skateboarding, like I discovered my own athleticism. Like, cause if uh-huh. you want to make a trick, you have to apply yourself, which yeah. means you need to start paying attention to where you're like, cause I tried out for football, baseball, I sucked at tennis. I just was bad at sports yeah. until skateboarding. Um, and then it's like, you don't have anybody to blame no, you know, yeah. you're not doing push ups. Yeah. You're not running laps. It's like, all right, I, I got to figure this out. Yeah. If I want to learn how to like Ollie or do a backside slide or whatever it is, a 180, you know, a 180 yeah. slide. Um, cause that's what it is for us at the time. Yeah. 360s. And, um, so the other cool thing, so she saw that I was like applying myself. Yeah. Um, and then she was looking through some of the thrashers and trans worlds and they all had articles on people that were creatives in skateboarding. I forgot what the, they've always, the yeah, they've had those for, yeah. That's, that's like tr- since the eighties. Yeah. And so it's a trip that you point that out now. Cause I don't know how all these years, like you think about the back of trends. I was like, yeah, this, this Jim Hauser feature or something. Right. Like, I'd be like, now it all, it, this dude's a carpenter, this yeah. dude's a sculptor, this guy's a painter, he's an mm-hmm. illustrator, so on and so forth. And so when she saw that the culture of skateboarding and that also the scarfing material, like, she's oh, like, yeah. oh, and I was a latchkey kid. Yeah. So she's like, Same oh, you me, got yeah. a bunch of, yeah. you know, and I probably made Chef Pierre's, you know, all yeah. the, made some horrible ass food from the, some of the Thrasher uh-huh. uh, scarfing material articles. But she was really excited about how creative this industry was. That's really cool. Right? And That's so, rare too. She, and then was all in. She's like, but my mom also, you know, we, we didn't have money. Like, again, like the fact that we rented a house in fire, we didn't rent a house. We rented somebody's back house yeah. and they were friends. So they were like, yeah, it, something that and we it's normally, just you and mom, you had yeah. siblings. No, I don't right. have any siblings. Right. I have a half brother, my dad's second son, right. um, but we didn't really know each other then. So anyway, come back to Brooklyn, show my mom the mag. She's like, man, you really love the skateboarding thing. Um, what are you going to do about it? That's my mom's yeah, attitude. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? And I was like, what, you know, what does that mean? And it basically means like. Get to work, save your money. Exactly. Get yourself so, aboard. you know, the drill. Yeah. So, um, I worked for my mom and I did odd jobs. And then when it finally came time to get aboard, I went up to Larry and Jeff's and Bruno Musso was working there. Bruno from yeah, shut. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like an OG in skateboarding already. Kind of like, he's like the second generation, you know, the Kesslers and mm-hmm. then Bruno's and he's kind of, Bruno's been skating since he was a little kid. Right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I go to buy a board and I like, I choke and I'm like, Ah, uh, because I don't know what's sick, yeah. right? <laughs> and it's your like your money, so you're like you don't want to make the right. I remember being like there being like a Tom Grholsky board, a Gons board, and then a Roscoe, like a first like Grholsky skater for that time. Vision, vision, all right. So it had this like weird Tasmanian devil thing on yeah. it, like kind of like a fat Tasmanian devil with a weird face, and I was like, not, nah, I don't want yeah. that. And then there was this brand X board that looked like eighties abstract art, like yeah. weird Miami All art. the shapes are different too, yeah. right? It was just like a big egg. It was a uh, pig as yeah. they call it. Right. And then, uh, 
So instead of getting the gongs with the ventures, I get this brand X board with like speckled, like paint splattered black and purple motor belts. And I got vision blurs. Mm -hmm. And that was my first board. Um, and then, then I had the bug, then it was on and I just was skating like every day. And you remember like skating in the winter, you get bundled up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You can barely move. Um, did that, but you know, I could have, I could have had a, like a Gagans yeah. could have been my first board. Can I just over, didn't know. Yeah. You overthink, right. overthink it yeah, as a kid. Yeah. I was just like, ah, yeah. I'm here. I, yeah. There's the boards. But, um, so that was my first board. The and Gans. then I would skate with, yeah. And I would skate with. And the Gans board was a vision too at that yeah, point? It was yeah. his first pro model. Cause the, he skated for Alva before that. The first video, I think it was like 87 or 88. There was an infomercial running and it was a video called psycho skate and i hounded my mom to you know use her credit card or right. somehow cod to, to buy and i just watched the video and i knew nothing about who the pros were or anything you know like the gons part definitely like the gator had a part in it right and i was like well this guy's an asshole he was super arrogant in the video oh yeah like laying on like a transformer pillow on top of a vert ram he he's that's when he started he added the mark anthony Cause he just used to be Mark Rogowski Gator. Uh, and then he was like Mark Anthony Rogowski and he was like trying to be a model and stuff. Yeah. I, I, like, I, oh. I remember as a kid being so turned off, but then they get to like the Gons part and he's at like Wallows. He's like got a beret on and Jordans. And I'm like, this guy is the shit, <laughs> you know, like, I don't Ooh. even know. Like he's the, uh, uh, still like, I was trying to explain like how, I don't think that people, that was the conversation I was talking about. I guess, I think it was before we started filming, like how important those dudes, no, we were already filming. Sorry. Um, but like how much like Tommy and Nottis and Gons like pushed skateboarding. So there's like these spurts and then it happens again in the early nineties, mm-hmm. like ladies in the early nineties where you get like the Jeremy Kleins and like, yeah. and just everything changes at yeah. light speed. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it just, you know, or, or like Salmon, like yeah. pretty, not inventing switch, but pushing switch yeah, into yeah. like, and people forget that cause it's all normal now. Yeah. Right. And so for me, like that's kind of when I was like, ah, there's no future. Like, in, in me trying to be a sponsored skateboarder, like when the whole switch uh, thing happened yeah, yeah. and also wheels got really small. Yeah. I liked to skate fast. Yeah. And I was like, I, I can't go anywhere, but anyway, sorry. No, it's okay. So sorry. What were you going to ask? I, I was going to say, no, no, I, I like that. It's fuck it. Um, uh, I was going to say, what do you remember? You know, cause you know, obviously I grew up on like love park was down the street. You have sure. these spots, EMB, and I remember the very first time, like walking up to Love Park and being like, oh, this is it. Like, oh, like the the Holy Grail. Right. Um, and obviously the banks hold equally, maybe even not more of a special place in, in skating and, and obviously going back for so many years. What was that like as a kid? Discover like where, like, when did you f- like hear about it? When did you go down there? Like, and what was just life like skating down there? Trying to remember on a the first time I went down there. I think so. Like I, 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 I guess I still had that that brand X board when I went down there. So you were little, little still, huh? still like fourteen. Um, I think I got like a, Mo- a Schmidt sticks Monty Nolder after that, mm-hmm. and I painted these like I did the grip tape like uh the English beat had these things called go feet and they were like, it's like a ska logo. Uh, now, and then that, I think that's when I went to the banks for the first time when I had that board. You um, take the train down there? Took the train. And then I fig- I figured out later that I could skate there from my house. Cause oh, no where way. I lived is now called the South slope. Well, it was Borm Hill, but, um, downtown Brooklyn. It's Uh not called downtown Brooklyn anymore, I guess. But so, you know, I would every day to get to high school, I would get on the train at Nevin street, which is right at Flatbush at Nevin's. Uh And then if you make a left right there, you can go over to the Brooklyn bridge. Um, and just skate across the Brooklyn bridge. 
people walk across all the time. So we would just skate across it and then it lets you out at the base of the bridge yeah. or by the bubble part. Um, and when I was a kid, not a lot of people skated the wedge part, right? Which is- Oh, get out of here. We over all skated the, the bubble. We skated the bubble where you ollie over the wall. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Into, right, right. into the No one ramp. skated the bigger part. Right. Oh, get out of here. I mean, kind of when there's a Bones Brigade video where you see Lance and a couple other people, like, I think they have Eddie Radigy with them. Yeah. Even though he wasn't like a Bones Brigade guy, but they, they're skating that. And Dante Ross is in that part. Oh, uh, no way. Um, I think Jeremy, I'm 90% sure Jeremy was there and like- Dave Hackett was in that part, Man. but they all skate the wedge part and then they do Dante, da music Dante? Yeah. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, he's Damn. skate. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, Damn, that's he's sick. push around. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, he's in that first Bones Brigade video. It's crazy. Or not the first, is it, is it Future Primitive where they go to New York? I don't remember. Wherever they go yeah. to New York, they're skating that, the big, the bigger part yeah. of the banks, but we always just skate the, the bubbly part. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. it. That was the banks for us. It was grimy down there then, right? Yeah. Cause all the contests were at that part. They right. weren't at the rail on the back side. They weren't down at the bottom where the big part is. Yeah. All the contests were up top. Um, like that's the first ledge I ollied on to. Off um, the bank? Yeah. Damn. That's um, a, it was a hard bump to Ali. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. It's really, it took like a really, really, really long time for me to figure it out. And then and if you your see wheels like, get up on the top, yeah, you're, you're going back. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was it was crazy. Like, and then that was like, so Washington Square Park was the meeting spot. Uh -huh. um, unless, like, if it was Stan and I skating across the bridge, we'd be like, "Yo, meet us at the banks," or we would skate up to the park, or we'd take the train to Washington Square Park and skate down to the banks. But you had all these little stops, like World Trade Center, yeah. um, a lot of stuff in the financial district down there. There were a lot of skate spots. So in and around there, there was a AT and T banks, which was like a there had three sides that yeah. were like 45 degree. I think there's that. So it's a picture of me and you Eli. And Eli. Yeah, yeah, that photo is great. I was going to um, ask you about that. That one's sick. And there's a, a kind of a wedge Jersey barrier thing that there's a famous picture of Dune doing like a no comply oh, off shit, of. And one. he's got like a James Brown shut shirt on. It's when he was like. Because Dune really was coming middle. from Jersey at that yeah. point, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. But that was the thing though. Like. I was tripping when people are like, ah, oh, dude's not from New York. He's from Jersey or whatever. It's like, it was all the same thing. All of us were all over the place yeah. all the time. Like the amount of time I spent in Jersey or in PA or in Connecticut, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the Northeast corridor, right. You're just going corridor, like, yeah. or even Boston, yeah. um, you know, you could take the train up there and it's a different time. You're 15 and your parents let you get on a bus or a train to go Man. to a different state. Nobody cared. Like my, my hands, I no cell this, phone. I, when I think about the stuff that I did as a kid and now I have a 12 year old daughter, it literally like <laughs> on my palms are sweating right now. Cause it's like, I'd be 11, I'd get on the train and it was 75 cents to ride the regional rail right. into center city. And then we'd take the bus up to, um, Port Authority. Right. And like, dude, if my mom knew that she would have murdered me, <laughs> like, and I'm like, what if you got hurt? You know what I'm oh. saying? Like what month was she going to leave her waitressing job to come pick right. my ass up in another state? In her LeBaron. Right. <laughs> like, yo. <laughs> Chrysler. Dude. Amazing. But yeah, so yeah. that was the reality. And I try to tell people stuff like that. And they're like, cause it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, why, you know, they, if you got hurt, why wouldn't you just have called her? Like yeah. with what? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. We didn't like have cell phone? phones. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, or who? You, so hope she's at the location, right? right? You hope she, well, she's yeah. work or somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, for real. Um, yeah. But so, yeah, and then um, we started. I met Rod Rodney Smith. Yeah. I, I met Bruno. I used to skate with a, a cat named Kamal Patton from Brooklyn a lot. Bar Brown. Yeah, Bar, uh, man, Bar's yeah. the fucking man, yeah. Um, I Clarence, love Bar. Clarence Nathan. Damn, Bar was skating back then too? Yeah. Bar, why you never told me this? Yeah, he like, people don't, like, I'm gonna when he him. says stuff like that, people like probably just eye roll and they're like, sure, but Bar was like, I'm going to call Clinton Bar Hill. as soon as I get off in the car tonight. That's and amazing. Clinton guy. Hill's an adjacent neighborhood to my neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. So you have like, Borm Hill, uh, downtown Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, like they're all like, and yeah. Park Slope are all 
in immediate pro- proximity. Um, so Bar's crew was Bar, Kofi, Kamal was the youngest, Clarence. Um, I know I'm missing someone, but that was their whole crew. And, and Bar worked at Soho Skates for a long time. He worked no at way. one of the first real, like, Soho Skates was kind of like, there's a place called the Rat Cave which was a record shop and skate shop. And it was like more punk rock. Dream Wheels was a roller roller skate shop that sold skateboards. Bruno also worked there. Um, and then, like I said, everything else. But Soho Skates uh, was opened by this woman named Ann Zemitis. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Um, or that that's the right last name, but that's what my mm. old man brain recalls. Um, and it was like, it was sick. Like Harry Jumanji skated for that shop. Mm. bar worked there a guy named Kristen Lepanto worked there um a guy named Aaron Lennox who was sponsored by Schmidt Stick skater for that shop mm. like and so that was like a big deal to have people like so for context this is 1986 yeah dang. right so yeah. to have somebody in the city that's like sponsored and Harry was riding for his soy Ian Fromm was riding for Skull Skates damn and they, those dudes were the only other dude there, I mean, Fred Smith and Mass or Rhode Island or wherever, yeah. where's Freddie from? I don't remember. And then you got Trees. Yeah. And then Roger Brown. Roger, yeah. Santa Cruz. Yeah. Right. Um, God, but there weren't Chuck. really like, that dude's the king, by the yeah. way. Um, he's a G. I love Chuck too. Yeah. I saw Chuck. I was driving in New York uh, like a summer ago. Um, and I, we pulled over to a rest stop. And him and his kid were eating at the rest guy. That's dope. And I was like, you know, your dad's a legend, right? <laughs> I'm only, re- yeah. the wild thing is he's one of my heroes, but I only really met him in the last 10 years Get through, out of through here. Tommy. No way. You know, from them playing shows together. Yeah. Um, but, and it kind of, you know, in my forties fanning out. Yeah. Like, oh fuck, it's yeah. trees. That's awesome. But, man. um, but I, you know, I, so Rod, is making these riser pads called ut pads uh-huh. and they're like wooden cell blocks. Um, and uh, our friend Eric Cologne was doing some of the graphics for me, did this James round face, which is the famous, uh-huh. and I need to say this cause he needs his flowers. Cause people always, there's all these shut conversations all the time. And Eric did the original James Brown shut graphic Get out of here. That, that you'll see like, um, and nobody mentions him. We'll pull that he's up. A, he's it. like a Staten Island skateboarder. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there was a contest in Ocean City, Maryland. And we, um, it's weird because I watched Rod's Nine Club and he says that I was like, because he had up pads. I did, it was shut already. Right. Like, up was short for shut. Um, but we decided we, a bunch of us wanted to go to this contest. So we bought a bunch of stick it stick blanks, which were blank boards. Um, and we made a bunch of shapes and then we stenciled these shut graphics and we were like, get out of team here. shut. Even though I technically never yeah. rode for yeah. shut, that's how we all entered this contest. Uh-huh. And there was this kid, I, can't, I always forget his name. He's from like Arizona. And it was like, Jeremy was, I don't know if Jeremy was, Jeremy rode for Dogtown before he rode for Shut, but I think he was just there. Uh, and then Bruno, Rod, um, I want to say Rinaldi, Derek Rinaldi yeah. maybe, and Kamal, if I didn't mention him already. Um, I don't remember who else was in that van. We rented a van and we drove down to Ocean City, Maryland. And that's when we met um, Sheffy and his boy, Sonny. Get out of here. And they were like shop sponsored. Um, so they were still boxing and skateboarding. Sheffy was ripping, huh? <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. We So Kamau and I decide we're going to go to the Sevy and get Gatorade. And we see Sheffy and Sonny skating. And again, for context, like nobody could ollie over shit really yeah. yet. Like, like that. Like, like Nottis or Gons yeah. or Tommy, right? Like... And it sounds funny to say, because this is the evolution of this thing, yeah. right? And uh, I was like, I'm looking at a superhero right now. Yeah. They were alling out of this curb cut, like super far at mock speed. And 
we had to stop and watch them. We were so blown away because yeah. in our minds, the only people that can do that are like those, th- yeah, those dudes and maybe yeah. Christian, right? Yeah. Like, and we're just like, and we basically flew back to the spot and we're like, you need to go see these kids. This is crazy. And then a bunch of the, like Rod and Bruno and those dudes ran over and then they, we all kind of introduced ourselves and we were friends. That's amazing. And then that's how he got hooked up. So then later Rod and Bruno decided to turn this, this thing into a, a full on brand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we cut the first boards on my mom's roof, but that, and Eli and I did a bunch of like, we took a piece of paper and we folded it in, in half and then in half and in half. So there was like 12 panels. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? So there was, we each got six panels and we just like drew stuff on them. And then we Xerox them on a sticker paper and then used one of those like school cutting yeah, yeah. blades. And those are the first shut stickers. That's a trip. Um, is that, is that, that's 86, 87, I think. Is that how you start segueing into like the design aspect? Yeah. Into, in a skateboard mm-hmm. company or a company in Just in designing. Like, yeah. so I, I went to high school, I went to Firo LaGuardia School of the Arts. And again, like, so I actually started to get decent at sports because I was, had understood my body now yeah, because yeah, of skateboarding. Yeah. And similarly, um, I was labeled learning disabled. So skateboarding and graffiti gave me the personal, I was dyslexic, I guess technically still Mm -hmm. dyslexic, but a lot of it is just a focus conversation. Right. Um, and a lot of the therapy for different types of dyslexia, but my dyslexia, I forgot what it's called, um, was focusing. So developing hand style, developing a focus and self-discipline in skateboarding really helped me with dyslexia. Um, and then also an interest in graphic design because so many of the skateboard graphics and ads and layouts and magazines were just super sick. And so started making zines with friends because of that. And, um, and then, you know, somebody's like, Hey, you want to make a skateboard, like a t-shirt graphic or skateboard graphic? You're like, what? Or we used to draw graphics on our t-shirts with Sharpies and stuff. Um, and a lot of that was us watching like what was happening in Venice. Like that crew of kids, I think the New York guys really, or at least the immediate crew, and people say this, you'll hear Rod and Bruno talk about it, but we were really influenced by the Dogtown guys That's or just awesome, all the Venice guys, yeah. the energy that was coming out of there and the San Francisco guys, you know, so CBS, like Orb yeah. and Ar- Archimedes and Julian and all those dudes. And Julian was kind of like back and forth, but like, man, that's another um, awesome thing with skate. I mean, to cut you yeah. off, but the fact that like you're, you have what you and your friends and your circle in New York are doing psyched on what these guys in Venice are doing psyched on what these guys in SF are doing. Right. And that, that, uh, that train of thought, and I, I hope kids still have that today. I wonder, cause like I always had so much pride in Philly, but I love the Pulaski guys. I love the Banks yeah. guys. I love the Boston guys. And those guys are special because to me because of that still to this day. So I hope that regional context is still a thing with these kids. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder it's, you know, it's, I was talking about that to this kid last night too. Like I remember the first time I came to California and I thought I was good uh-huh. in New York. And then I get to California and I realized that all the videos that I've been watching were filmed two years prior, even though it's the new H street video, yeah. that shit was filmed two years ago. And so I'm like, Oh, I'm up to date. And yeah. they're like, and then I'm also like, everybody's good. Cause California yeah. already has like skateboarding is part of social culture in yeah. California by this time, you know, and has been really since the sixties or seventies. Whereas when we were kids back East, it's like, I knew every skateboarder within two miles of my house. Mm-hmm literally like once it started to pick up a little bit. Right. Um, and largely knew most of the cats within the tri-state area Yeah, because you're seeing each other at contests, you meet at a skate shop. That's how much it was. Right. You could, you you knew all these guys. Right. That's how small the circle was. It's like, it is a crazy one that people don't get. And you know, it's funny people like, Oh, cap, whatever. It's like, if you saw somebody with vans on the East coast or the Northeast, um, in the eighties, because 
they they weren't at they were only at like four stores in New York. Yeah. Right. You knew they were a skateboarder, a BMXer, or a punk kid from or from California. Yeah. Or like a punk rock kid. Um like Rockville BMX had them. Uh you could get them at Dream Wheels, I think. And but you kind of had to special order them. Yeah. Um, and then Paragon Sports. Damn. Like, so there's really only two places in the city that sold vans, not through the whole eighties, but in the early eighties. Yeah. So you'd be on the train and you saw somebody with vans and you'd be like, yeah. do you skate? Yeah. It's like seeing a writer with yeah. ink on his hands. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and that's not like there's no sensationalism or, or, um, exaggeration. Yeah. In that. Like that's a real ass thing, especially if they had an Ollie hole, you're like, yeah. Like, and your friends, like I literally, I met this dude named Eve Chow. He's, he owns a skate shop in, uh, in Belgium that way. Damn. We both had Ollie holes in yeah. our vans and just the fact that we had vans on mm -hmm. and it was that small, like, I know it sounds like the, like when I was a kid, we nah, nah, walked through 10 feet yeah. of snow, but it's just, uh, the Northeast experience was a lot different. So anyway, I get out here, I come to visit my friend Alice there and I'm just like, Oh fuck. Like I actually suck. Like we're at home. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I didn't think I was like super good, but I was like, I'm good. And I was like, God damn. I yeah. went home and I was like, yo, yeah. everybody's good. The other thing is like, they can skate all year round. Right. Though. Yeah. Yeah. We got like eight months tops. Right. You know, for the months it's like 110 degrees and humid. For real. Know? But yeah. So that, uh, being around the shut crew and being involved with that, there's, you know, it was most of the art was, you know, Eric on the front end, e myself and Eli or Eli and myself, Wiley Singer, a guy named Alex Talavera, who we used to call Ducky mm -hmm. or Baby Gons. Uh, Jeremy did some of the art. Um, and another guy that doesn't get mentioned enough because he did the fist with the oh, four yeah, finger yeah, ring yeah. is a uh, Hugh Grant who used to go by Hugh skin. He and I went to high school together. Um, and he did the bat guy, the dude yeah, with the yeah, hoodie yeah, on, yeah, like yeah. actually some of the more iconic shit yeah. stuff is done by Hugh. I and always he never really gets his yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and he was a, a dope skateboarder as well. Um, but yeah. And so that's what really like pushed me working on that stuff graphically instead of just like writing on trains or writing in black books, uh -huh. like made me pay attention to stuff more as far as like a graphic thing and really want to pursue graphic arts. Yeah. Um, even though I'm a clothing designer more than a graphic artist. Um, and I don't really consider myself a graphic artist. Uh, I kind of did for a while, uh -huh. but um, I know I, re I was reading one interview and they said that and I'm like, nah, that's, yeah, I'm, you ain't gonna limit, limit a lot of people are like, oh, so a graphic like artist. I'm like, mm, yeah. like by trade, I'm a, uh, I'm an apparel designer, yeah. but, um, I can futz my way through yeah. some graphic stuff. I have fun with it. So let me but, ask you a question then. Brooklyn, grow up skating, shut, working with Rodney, learning design and Pardon me if I jump anything, nah. but one, I mean, obviously the one company that like hit home for all of us East coast kids, obviously. And I was a massive Jimmy Chung fan growing oh. up. You know, Jimmy, I am West still touch base with Jimmy here and there. Dope. That's my dude. Um, and Steve Young too. Yeah. Um, was obviously American dream. Okay. So you know. in between that super cool, good to that, like immediately after. So, um, like I said, I don't really officially ride for shut. I'm just kind of around part of the crew and there's dudes that are coming in that deserve to ride, you know, the Keppers of the world, yeah. Felix, so on and so forth. Dune, like dudes that are really putting in work, Billy Waldman, uh, All this guy named Tex day. that never gets mentioned, Beasley, Tex Kelly, um, Kamal ripped like they had their, their whole squad was crazy. Coco. Uh -huh. Everybody's amazing. Sheffy, obviously. Um, Coco was a New York guy too. It's a Jersey. Well, All right. Kind of, I think he had family in San, I don't think he had family in San Francisco and in Jersey and he kind of came back and forth and All then right. he spent a big chunk of time in New York and then that's when he got on, on shut. All right. Um, so 
I end up going to visit my friend Alistair in Santa Monica again. And I run it. I'm skating Kenter Banks. I'm skating pretty good at this point in time. And I, I meet Mark Partain, um, who was pro for Blockhead. Uh-huh. And he's with uh, Butch Sturbins, um, another Z guy, and Jeff Ramos, who skated for Epic at the time. Was it Epic? I think it was Jeff was skating for mm-hmm. Epic. And then basically Mark was like, dude, you're sick. And we start talking. We start talking about music and punk rock and hip hop collectively yeah. right and uh they got like a public enemy sticker on my board because yeah. like Nottis and you know not yeah. because of Nottis, but like Nottis and tommy were rocking pe shirts yeah. all the time and stuff and so um i he gets me on blockhead so then i come out he gets me a job at trans world oh good and i worked at trans world for two days that's a whole other story in san diego in san diego Man. so i move out to san diego to go work for trans world. I get, uh-huh. I take the bus there. How old are you, you think? 18. Going from New York to sleep. Yeah. Yes, and it's my dream job though. Yeah. I want to work. I'm like, I get to, yeah. be, it, so it's in the art department making. So they have, or they had a team that for skateboard companies that didn't have art departments to make their own ads. Uh-huh. They had in-house ad team. And so I was getting to do ads for like toxic or whoever. Oh, that's like, a trip. Yeah. It was sick. And I yeah. was like, this is it. I've made it. Like, yeah. you can't tell me shit. Like I'm golden. And, and imagine sent hold of it. Imagine a point in time where companies are sending you guys just make the ad for us. Right. <laughs> like, here's a great. picture. Like here's yeah. a picture of like Bernie O'Dowd. Yeah. Like I, I, I laid out a, remember Darren Mendito? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I laid yeah. out one of his toxic ads yeah. my first day there. So I, um, I show up create like four hours late because Mark lived in, in, uh, Mission Beach and we drove the route and then he, I got a bus map and, and we figured out, oh, it'd be like an hour. And I was like, easy. I'm like, train ride to school every day is an hour. Yeah. Like, but it has mad stops. So I got there yeah. like four hours late. So from Mission Beach to Oceanside is like a crazy long trip. Like, but if you just drive, it's like an hour. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I showed up super late and I got fired pretty much when I walked in oh, the door. No. And then Grant and Mickey and O um got me my job back. I did an ad. Um and I got the flu. Oh no. But no, I got the flu the second day. So I did the ad. So you're late I worked, and now I'm sick. Right. And then I got like the worst flu of my life. And I stayed with Ron Cameron, who's one of my favorite skateboarders and artists. Mickey and O all lived in the same house. And I stayed with them in their spare room, dying. Damn. Uh, living off of Gatorade for four days. And then I was like, this wasn't meant to happen. Yeah. Um, skated around, got my check out in Trans World. Uh-huh. Um, then kind of this girl I'd met drove me up to Venice and then, um, I ended up moving in with, uh, Kelly Jackson oh, good from Dogtown. Yeah. Um, and he and I were, were good friends already. So I stayed with him and Aaron Murray kind of, um, and then, which was also a trip cause I didn't know what local is. I had like yeah. a flat top and I was wearing like pastel colors and yeah. Venice was very like localized. Well, that's what I was going to say. Was it a trip? It was 88. That, yeah. And I thought, you know, I'm not a tough guy, but yeah. I was like, I kind of got hands. Yeah. And like Kelly was like, this isn't that bro. Like, nah, yeah. you, you, this is not the smoke. Yeah. Like regardless of you could be super nice with the hands. That's, that's so he walked me up to the boardwalk, introduced me to everybody. And I made a bunch of friends and it was still weird. Cause I was like a blockhead guy yeah. in Venice, but I got a pass, I guess. That's cool. Cause I survived there for however long. And then I met George Wilson. George was doing a brand, uh, called Bronze Age or he's part of Bronze Age. And I would go bug him about how to make t-shirts and how mm-hmm. to design clothes. Cause he was actually doing cut and sew stuff. And George was the, the, he's a former Z or I was, you know, always a Z, mm-hmm. once a Z boy, always mm-hmm. a Z boy. Um, and he kind of mentored me or not kind of, but very much was like, he'd take time cause I was curious and he'd mm-hmm. like answer questions and stuff. Um, and that's how I really, really, really got into apparel design was okay. through meeting George and like, you know, he'd be like, I'm going to the screen shop. You want to go check it out? And I'd never been to yeah. like a screen shop before. I'd only seen the, the silk screens that Rod and Bruno were using yeah. at, in the wood shop. Um, so, um, I go back to New York and then, um, 
then fat farm happens, whatever. We'll skip through that. Um, and then, yeah, that's cause I was curious. I was always curious, like if your, your design and your entrepreneurship, was it like skating and then you go work for a company like fat farm or is it fat farm? And then you start doing the skate stuff. No, I think once we figured out that you could make your own skateboards, like watching the, like the Nimbus guys, uh-huh. or remember there were all sorts of like small companies up and down that, you know, dudes yeah. were like, once they could get their own boards, dudes were screening stuff on their own. They'd just get the boards cut or they would cut blanks on their own. Shut's yeah. a perfect example. Nimbus is another one. Flight, Team Jolt. There was a uh-huh. bunch of stuff up and down the coast. But, um, so the entrepreneurial spirit was there yeah. for sure. Like, was silk screening some of my own t-shirts All right. um, and slinging those uh, when I got back from California and trying to, you know, figure it out. Yeah. Um, selling t-shirts at the banks out of my backpack kind of shit. That's um, but uh, fat farm happens. Um, and then I got let go or I kind of got in this weird thing with Russell. Um, and, I've been talking to blaze blue and a lot, uh, and blaze and kind of become somewhat of a mentor. And, um, my great aunt had passed away and my mom and I were like cleaning out her house and outside of Boston. And, um, I just like got all these ideas for, for a kind of a politically charged skateboard company. So I got home and I kept faxing drawings to, to blaze uh-huh. cause it's 1992, 90, 93, no, sorry, 94, 94. It's 1994. So you have fax machines. <laughs> um, so we're faxing shit back and forth and he's like, that'd be insane. Like you should do it. And I was like, I want to call it American dream incorporated and kind of like the irony of pursuing the American dream. Uh-huh. Um, and, um, he's like, I think it'd be insane. So I go, my friend, Matt is managing Supreme at the time, Matt McGrath. Mm-hmm. Um, and I show him a bunch of the drawings. Blaze is kind of already signed off. At it. He's like, he's like, it's sick. You should talk to Dune cause Dune's doing, he's already doing st- stereo yeah. out of, uh, deluxe and he's just starting this thing with Ari called Metropolis. Yeah. And you should see if they've, you know, got any funds or, you know, they've got a lot of resources. You yeah. should see if you sh- you can do something out there. So I hit Chris up. And so Chris is really instrumental in this, in the, the conversation. And he's like, it's like, we don't have it, but I, you know, I'll, I'll call Jeff Clint and, and Jim mm-hmm. and see what they say. And he's the one that, connected me. I'd known Jim a little bit from demos and yeah. stuff. I'd never met Clint, but I was a big fan of his artwork. Was Jim equally as cool back then as he is today? Super cool. Like, cause yeah, absolutely. One of the coolest during my whole chemotherapy dude man. was sending me like the coolest, like postcards and like Pokemon stick of weird shit, but yeah. just because, and then like, give me a shout every now and then, yeah. like really one of the people so I know it's a little yeah. like, no, no, but no, like, so I love this like shit. when I was going through my chemotherapy, he would check on me like probably twice a month, Damn. every second week. Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a DM, a text, a, a postcard would just randomly show up with some artwork yeah. on it or like he's stickers. He's a special or, human being. Yeah, man. man for yeah. real. Jim's about it. Like he's somebody I aspire to be like, like as a human being. Yeah. Um. So when you reach out to him back then, he's just as cool. And I knew Tommy as well. Just, um, right when they started real, I was at a skate camp in Massachusetts and it's, uh, it was like, that's another crazy one. Sorry. It's okay. Andy, um, Andy Howell, Jim and Tommy, they just started real. Uh, they just put Tony, um, Ferguson on. Yeah. So he drove from Vancouver to Massachusetts Damn. to go to the skate camp. He's there. Um, Little Tony Ferguson. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, Jim Gagney. Jim Gagney. And Corey yeah. Shaw live in Mass. Yeah. Uh, Phil Frost is there. Yeah. Blake Hannon's there. 
Barbier, I want to say Johnny Schillereff, like yeah, the damn. cast of heads that was there. And I know I'm forgetting some people, but like it At keeps, skate camp that skate camp keeps circling around and people are like, dude, like, and kind of everybody was there went on to do like amazing shit. Yeah. Um, anyway, I hit them up. Clint's like, he's like, I have an idea, but I need to, he's like, do you like Ron Allen? And I'm like, Ron's one of my heroes we've never met. But as a, you know, as a young black kid, like I had, you know, hundreds of photos of this dude on my wall. Right. Um, he's like fun isn't doing so great right now, but we have a budget for it. And if you guys are in, if he's up for it, we can use that budget for American dream, but you got, we can't, can't bogart his shit. Yeah. It's, it's Ron's, you know, you guys Fun need was to be going through deluxe as well. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And Keenan and Huff had left already. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people forget that they rode for fun. Like, yeah. um, and, uh, who do they go ride for? Cause I don't know the chocolate is around yet. Or maybe it was, Oh, Keith went to go ride for real. real yeah. And I forgot who Keenan went to go ride for. Keenan go to World or something? Maybe. Right. I think World probably. Um, see, that's so, the, that's the thing. At even at forty one, there's that five or six year gap. Yeah. Where like between Psycho Skate and like, be like twenty shot. I they're like I'm still putting the pieces together, and I'll still I will still try to put those totally. Pieces, and know, the wild like, shit is when it's happening, it felt like forever, and now it feels like it was just a blip. Yeah. Right, and you're like. That's what I mean. I'm like, how did all this shit happen within a three or four year time period? A lot of stuff <laughs> went down in a really short period of time. That's what I'm talking about. It's like an industrial revolution or yeah. something gets invented <laughs> and it just changes everything. Yeah. And then everything moves at mock speed. Anyway, he gets me on the horn with Ron. You know, I fax him some of my thumbnails. Um, and then he's like, let's do this. And then, uh, and this is I someone you had no there. background with, no, no, like no previous it, you know, relationship or. Yeah. And I, I flew uh, out there and we met and I was like, you sure? Like, you know, yeah. and then it was just on. Um, I mean, the team always was like, and, and also I was like, damn, how did they pick such an amazing, uh, you know, I mean, they're all incredible skateboarders, but they're all incredible people, you know, and that was always what like, so you had this team and then the the graphics, the meaning behind the graphics, the name, you know, it was, I don't know, as a kid, I was like, yeah, I could recognize this is like a special, special thing. It was, it was you know? fun. Harold, I'd known, so I used to work at Skate NYC, the skate shop, and he was just a local kid that lived around the corner pretty much. And when I was riding for Blockhead, at that point in time, I would skate all board for like four or five months. You weren't breaking yeah. boards because you know, I wasn't, no, we weren't jumping downstairs the way you guys were, you know, and handrails were yeah. a new thing. Right. Um, so I wasn't breaking boards and I'd get like six boards a month. And I was like, I ride six boards for a year. Yeah. So I would, thought I was flying. I would ride a board for a little while and I would always give Harold my boards. So there's actually a lot of early Harold pictures where he's riding blockhead boards. Oh, get out of here. Um, there's two really famous pictures of him in the banks where he's riding Mark Partain boards. Damn, you and then there's another one me. where he's, he's doing a backside grab and he's got his, looks like maybe it's a Wally. Um, but he's riding one of Ron Cameron's boards. He's riding the tragic comic. Uh, um, I think the photo that was a big picture, it was a Supreme big t-shirt. I think he's riding a blockhead down. board. He uh, might be yeah, riding a blockhead board in that, in that picture. Nobody talks about that, but whatever. Yeah. Um, them little Harold too. Little, little Harold. Yeah. Um, and so he'd been on zoo and I guess expressed to me some frustration with payment or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not pointing fingers. I just was like, this is my boy. Yeah. He's says he's struggling. I have an opportunity. So I asked him to ride and I actually created a big rift between Rod and I, oh, cause Rod had been yeah. a mentor of my, yeah. you know, um, and that kind of sucked, but we're, we're golden now. Um, so it's Harold, Jamal Williams, who yeah. I've always been a fan of, best, and we've yeah. become cool. Um, uh, Marcus Brown, who's yeah. from Colorado, but stayed in the city. Um, I wanted to, I, w- I wanted Drake to ride for us, but that wasn't going to happen. He was oh, riding God, for yeah. real. No way, damn. Um, Johnny Fonseca. Yep. Johnny's in man, Chicago. Right? Um, yeah. And then, uh, Jesse McMillan, yeah. who was, 
Marx's best friend growing up and they used to call him baby huff. He oh, ripped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse I remember him. Sick. Yeah. Um, Lamont McIntosh. Lamont McIntosh. Damn. These are Corey from Brooklyn or from, where was Corey from? I think he's from Brooklyn. Um, and then Paul Leung. Yeah. And then Gangster Reacts kind of. Yeah. Um, See, a lot of these kids are kids of your, like, this is like a, there's a big, this is like a big first opportunity. Sure. For a lot of these guys, man. Yeah. And then Hearns, yeah. you know, yeah. Mike Hernandez, yeah. you know, who was riding for Supreme. I don't remember what board company was maybe infamous. Infamous, yeah, infamous was maybe a prior, but anyway, yeah. Hearns, um, Alex Corporan. Yeah. And so I realized that as I'm naming these names and I'm listening to, I watched Ron's interview on nine club. I'm like, damn, they really were a lot of my friends. He was like, it was mostly like all these friends. Oh, no like, way. Damn, damn. I was like, Oh shit. That's <laughs> kind of messed up. I'm sorry, Ron. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't just my people. Yeah. Like, cause originally Brad Stable rode for ADI. Get the hell out of here. Cause he was on fun. No and way. Just kind of, and then he, he was like, got super bummed on it. He was like, and I don't Ron's like this. still pro at that time. Mm hmm. So it's like, I got a mad run out of board. Yeah. Yeah. Like, trying so, to be like a brand visionary and, and pros like that's not a easy. No. And he was touring. Know. Like he said in his nine club, like he was out on the road, yeah. like doing it, like putting in work. Ron's a beast. Like yeah. when it comes to that stuff, like consummate professional skateboarder. Um, Jamal had an interview somewhere where he said that um, he specified that you would reach out to him a lot. Uh, it's particularly in regards to the graphics. And I thought that was very, very cool. Oh yeah. I didn't, yeah. I would, you know, you'd watch people like some cats didn't care. And then I just always imagined like, and maybe it's my own projection. I guess it is like where I was like, well, if I was pro, like my graphics are going to be real special. Yeah. Me, you know? Yeah. But this is also the point in time where like, a graphic doesn't last four or five years. They're yeah. putting out four graphics a year, you know what yeah. I mean? So I would try to be mindful and be like, you know, is there anything you have in mind Yeah. or, or here's some things I I'm thinking about. If you don't like them, we don't need to use them, you know, and we would really work together on graphics. You That's know? awesome. Yeah. Um, especially Make somebody everyone, like Jamal. Every board man. matter. You like know? contemporarily, like, I wish, you know, it'd be sick to have had Jamal do some of his own yeah. graphics, but, um, I got to imagine though, I'm sure there's a lot of what you guys were doing then and what he does today with hops and right. has obviously been yeah. doing with hops. Yeah. It's one of my favorite board uh, companies still. Yeah. Um, he's Jamal's the best man. Like just good energy people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, when, Ron talks about a different, oh, and so we, we did most of our graphics. We didn't do a lot of our graphics in the deluxe office because I was real good friends with Dawes. We would kind of camp out in the slap offices. Oh, get out of here. Oh, that's with, awesome. With Lance and Wayan and Hassan. So Wayan Chang, who ended up uh, working for DC later uh -huh. and then co-founding Clay with Sung, um, he laid out a lot of like the majority of the ADI ads. No way. Like I would sit behind him and be like, Hey, can you put this over here and yeah. make that red and do that kind and of he thing? He was working for slap at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was a gra like graphic artist. He and Hassan were there doing stuff. And it, um, it makes sense. Cause when I think back of the aesthetic of, of slap now, it's like, you know, you know, there's like certain brands aligned with certain mags and stuff. Like, I don't know whether it's, that's like, um, not intentionally, right. but, but, you know, unintentionally. So yeah. it's like, and that, yeah. And Lance comes from that perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. And so like Lance, Dimitri and, and Dennis mm -hmm. McGrath. Cause I was, when I'd stay in the city, I would stay with the McGrath brothers. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, Dennis, Matt, John, John Drake, and, uh, Jesse and Marcus all lived all in the right. same house. And then every now and then we'd have like Harold or Lenny Kirk or like that house is crazy. Shipman used to stay with us a bunch of times. In Frisco. Yeah, in San Frisco. Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, but Dimitri shot so much stuff. Lance would make time to shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously um, Dennis and the three of them primarily like, and then Dan Wolf would film stuff all yeah. the time. Like he's like, um, you know, 
it was dope. It was super dope. How? I forgot I made beats for a bunch of videos too. Oh, so no I, way. Yeah. I did Andy, one of Andy Howell's parts in an element video or yeah. it was an element video or a new deal video. And then I did stuff for Felix for a planet earth part. Uh, yeah. And then I forget. There's like four or five joints. Jesse skates to one of my beats in a four, uh, four one one. Somebody else skates. Dan, uh, the yeah. Dan Wolf thing is yeah. what triggered that. Cause gotcha. I remember Dan asking me for music. Cause I was also making beats at the time yeah. and I was doing stuff for the jungle brothers. Oh, no way. Um, yeah. yeah. So it all kind of intertwines together. And that's why when people are like, Oh, this dude's fucking savant. I was like, yeah, I was doing that shit in like 94. Yeah. Like you're not special. Uh -huh. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> when you, the, the name changed from American dream to AD unit. Sorry. So I went okay. on a tangent. So what okay. happens is Ron, I think it was a, a bunch of things. Cause we knew we were selling well because yeah. distributors are saying, but I, it wasn't just Ron. I can't let Ron jump on the sword solely. Cause we also, you know, I, I know that I, uh, probably there was a sense of hubris, like, and I was a little too cocky. And then I remember Hearn's, Mike Hernandez yeah. used to call Deluxe the Death Star. And so we'd written in one of the ads, it was like the Deluxe Death Star. And we didn't look at it as the Death Star. We just thought it was cool. Yeah. Like it's the Death Star. Like we fuck shit up, yeah. right? Um, but it might've been interpreted as we were biting the hands that, you know, talking oh, shit about. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so it was a culmination of those things where Damn. they felt disrespected. Um, and I don't really know. I've actually never yeah. talked to Jim about it, yeah. but I just remember Jeff being like, you know, we kind of got to bring this thing to an end. Clint, yeah. um, who, you know, sadly passed away. Yeah. Regardless of great dude, yeah. I had no ill will. And then um, Ryan at Stepbrother Distribution, who's doing draws, uh -huh. was like, we can pick it up. And that's when... Jimmy Chung came on, yeah. um, and Spencer. And that was a new, and, and, and it was ADU. 80, yeah, yeah, And it yeah. probably could have been ADI still, yeah. but I didn't, you know, I think I was having a hard time with it. Ron was having a hard yeah. time with it. And I didn't want to ruffle feathers yeah, with yeah. Deluxe. Yeah. So I just changed it to AD unit. Um, the name yeah. just from the outside looking in, especially still 80. as still a customer, yeah, it was like that the continuity, it never seemed like it right. was like, oh, the new name. It's right. you know, it's like, you know, and the riders, you know, new riders were equally as ill. Yeah. And then Alfred Hawkins uh was doing a bunch of the graphics. Get out of here. I love yeah, Alfred. Man. Alfred did a lot, the majority of the ADU graphics actually. Man. Yeah. I have, so, I found ill pictures in my phone. This was like w uh, within the last couple of days. And I'm like, who is that doing this wall ride? And it's, it's photos of Alfred that Alex Aronovich sent me. When they're at aesthetics, when they're no, doing, oh. Do you know, it's like a little, it's like a young oh, shit. Alfred, like Sick. wall ride, like huge, like janky core Alfred pipe on skate. the wall. You know, Alfred I love Alfred, people like, Yeah. And he, him and Blaze were like best friends. Yeah. Um, and so I'd met. Alfred through Blaze. Mm. Um, yeah. And so that's how that, that happened. And right then Reem hit me. So Kareem's your cousin. He's my second cousin. That's incredible. And then he was like, yo, what are you doing? And I was like, I was working for Mecca and I was trying to get them to make outerwear because we were making like faux outerwear in some uh -huh. factory that made outerwear. I was like, why would you make faux outerwear in a factory that makes outerwear? Yeah. Like pay a couple extra bucks. So it's, two bucks here at retail, it's 20 bucks more, but you have tape seams yeah. and, you know, waterproof, breathable membrane. Like you can do the real thing. Yeah. And they were like, ah, they were just being cornballs about it. And I was like, whatever. And then he's like, would you ever work for dub and drawers? Damon and Ken are looking for designers. Um, are they really looking for a senior designer? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Damn. Cause DC was cr like, Early DC was crushing. Yeah. I already really loved what Drawers was doing. It was uh, just fun. Just as a clothing company, yeah. it was fun. Uh, I wanted to get away from 7th Avenue or quote unquote fashion industry or 
you know, what, what the industry deemed urban. Um, and I was always a tech nerd. Like I always loved, like I had a big Patagonia collection. I had a couple North face pieces. I was obviously collecting well, that's polo. What, that's what I think is hella cool yeah. about you. And is like all of these different fashions and styles, like from the, from me looking at it, it's like, this guy knows a lot about all of this shit. I, that's amazing. When I, when I meet people like yourself that like, you know, it's not like just one thing that they're, no, man, that they're knowledgeable of. It's all know? intertwined. Yeah. Like I always, always get frustrated. That was my thing with, with Mecca. Like I was like, if the same kids buying Mecca stuff and then buying a noopsie jacket, why can't we make like the same factory that we're making these waterproof jackets, even though they're, they're like TPU lined or, or whatever, like, uh, basically there's no breathability. It's mm -hmm. just like plastic, yeah. <laughs> um, or nylon with a plastic backing. Um, I was like, we can, but that the same factory also makes down jackets. We yeah. can make like a sick ass down jacket for the same guy. Right. Cause he's going to wear a North face jacket uh -huh. with Mecca jeans. Right. Yeah. Like why can't we go into this space? So I say that to say that when Ken and Damon, the conversation was not just drawers, it was dub. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And I, I'd been snowboarding a little bit, yeah. right. Already like back home, we'd skate in prospect, yeah, snowboard yeah. in prospect park or I'd go up to Camelback. And yeah. you know, there's a bunch of different places back home. Um, I was like, I get to design technical outerwear and skate shit. Yeah. And they had a, a, a sample room and a, like a sample room across the hall from Damon's office. So I could walk in there instead of sending tech packs to Hong Kong and waiting, you know, going back and forth month after month via FedEx, I could literally go make a sew sample in two days. No way. So they would, For, and it might not be the right, like, yeah, it might not be the proper fabric, yeah, but yeah. we'd get the cut dialed and then send that to the, the outerwear fabric. Get out factory. of here. That's incredible. Yeah. So I was like, buy New York. Like they, yeah, yeah. like Ken and Damon were like, they asked me what I was making at Mecca. I told them they're like, we're double it. And I was like, I moved my mom up to Harlem from Brooklyn. No way. And they were cool about that. They were like, you got three months, but you got to be here for two weeks every month for these three months. Uh -huh. So you can get her situ situated, which is extra cool. Um, and it's 1996. Yeah. Like I was like later, I didn't have to deal with any, like one of my biggest problems with a lot of the industry then and now is like people's, like, I just love the design and mm -hmm. I'm not trying to like put myself in a space, but like, it's like being a rapper. There's a lot of hubris involved. Yeah. Right. Cause they're adjacent spaces. And so a lot of people, there's a lot of attitude, and I'm like, I don't, I would stay home and listen to records. Yeah. Man. Like I just want to make cool shit yeah. <laughs> and go ride my skateboard and go snowboard and push design spaces. Yeah. Um, and just kind of nerd out. I didn't need all the extra stuff. At that pl point um, in time. So I San was, Diego's popping, huh? Oh, San Diego's cracking. And I, 96 is cracking. And ASR I can never, is happening. Like it's a trip. Cause you know, like I remember like seeing like Pacific Beach ads when I was a kid or uh, what's it? That's just, that's just Pacific Drive. Pacific Drive. I'm sorry. Pacific Drive. And I know like my heroes, a lot of them are coming from that area, but I'm like, where, like, you know, from or the, stopping the East there, Coast or right. like. You were stopping one of three places, you know, you either went to San Francisco. It's like, you know, uh, and how many heads we know like relocated yeah. there because Thrash is there, Ermico's there, yeah. Deluxe is there, um, all those adjacent things. And then similarly, San Diego um, had Transworld, yeah. uh, Tracker. I forgot what the holding company for Tracker is called, you know, and then a bunch of other small, you know, foundations yeah. down there at the time. Tumieto then Tumieto, so. well, Tumieto hadn't started yet. All Sorry. Right. That's a misnomer. Sorry. I fucked that up. Foundation was foundation was born out of world. Oh, get out of here. I'm pretty sure. Damn. Swank, if I fucked that up, yeah. don't kill me. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Todd moved up to LA for a while and worked with Rocco and then brought it back down gotcha. to San, San Diego. And when he brought it back down to San Diego, it became Tom Yeto. All right. But foundation, I think he started under the world roof gotcha. in LA. But so you had, the, you had world, 
and then a little camp and then big brother starts in LA. Yeah. So once there's a mag in LA, it's even bigger, but there, you know, it's always had a huge skateboard culture. There's yeah. a lot of, you know, um, pockets and deep seated skate culture in yeah. LA. So, but San Diego, you know, you had H street and I mean, GNS is from San Diego. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else I'm drawing blanks right now, but it, it had a really deep, deep skate culture yeah. as well. Um, plus it had a magazine. So if yeah. you went there, you're, you're going there to do the thing, like you're yeah. going there to work. Um, so these companies like, um, you know, I mean, what Damon, what Damon and Ken did, that's, that spearheaded a lot in the San Diego area with like manufacturing like drawers and dub and yeah. Uh, I think they, they pushed, they don't get a lot of credit for, for what they did. Cause they also had a, a magazine called blunt, which yeah, was yeah, the big yeah. brother of snowboarding. Yeah. Um, if you look at the cats that were involved with, uh, with drawers, and DC, yeah. like the original teams like are crazy. And every, the people that have gone through that roof, yeah. or that, through those doors. But- And you're working on a little bit of everything at that time? Yeah, period? not so, I'm living with Kelly Bird and he's the DC team manager. Uh, um, Diedrich's in there every day. Yeah. Um, John Drake. John Drake's the man. Yeah, never the gets his, somebody yeah. needs somebody. I, yeah. I, I want Clyde to interview John yeah. Drake because nobody ever talks about John Drake and he's the illest. I like watching his Instagram because yeah. he shares a lot of awesome stuff. But yeah, he was man. the man as a, when yeah. I, like time code yeah. stuff to me. Early alien, like the sickest. Um, he actually put me up on a lot of West Coast rap. I was living in Get Dayton for a little while, uh -huh. working on assault skateboards when they were just starting yeah, alien. Yeah. Like, uh, like MC8 uh -huh. was his shit. And that's why I like that's, MC8 that's now because yeah, of yeah. John Drake. Anyway, so, <laughs> but um, them, the fact that it took two skateboarders to put a sample room in their, on their premises that did, there's hundred year old clothing companies in New York that didn't have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, a trip. Like, um, and not that they're the, the only one there are definitely yeah. companies that did have yeah. that, but like, as far as like a new contemporary co company, mm -hmm. nobody did that. Um, and the fact that they could move at the speed that they did and that that's like skateboard thinking. It's what we're yeah. talking about. Right. Like you look at everything differently when you're a skateboarder. Um, and they looked at the landscape of apparel. They looked at like the stooses of the world. My, but, um, my shop, like my mall, was the skate shop. And, mm -hmm. and we had a, there, I was lucky. We had a really awesome skate shop in our neighborhood called Synergy. I remember and Synergy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get to that. So, cause, cause there, uh, as uh, that's in my introduction to you, but I would, the things, the t-shirt rack was in the middle, the cut and sew denim and outerwear was on the left hand wall. Footwear was on the right hand wall. And, and I watched within season two, three, four, five, six, DC show up drawers and dub and being like, there's nothing in here that for one has a presence that this product has. And for two, as a kid that comes from a pretty urban space has ever spoken to me. Like it's all these cues from these other worlds mm. that I really enjoy, but is speaking my language as a skate rat and as like a little hip hop honky. And like, you know, it was like, and I'm like, Oh, this is, you can't tell me this stuff wasn't made just for me. Oh yeah. You know? yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, Deerdick was around. He had yeah. his, his label PJ's records. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. you know, it, it was, it was all the shit that we all loved. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we had, that's the other thing. It was like, no, let everybody else do all the other stuff. We're going to do the stuff we want to do with yeah. dub. Like Bilal, who, was how I'm cousins with Reem, uh -huh. right? Her second cousins like was a stand-in somewhat manager for Wu-Tang for a little while um, during a period of time where they didn't have management. Uh -huh. So we'll hit him up and that's how we got all like, but dub on all the Wu-Tang guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd known um, 
Juju and Les from working, working from the Beat Nuts, uh-huh. from working with the Jungle Brothers. So I sent them a box of dub stuff. No one was, That's, no one was trying to get apparel like that to to ra- like like rapper placements. No, I just like used all the stuff. I did everything that Mecca wouldn't let me do yeah. at dub, like. And so I just, and then I was like reverse, it was a reverse yeah. play. Like I was like, all right, so we're going to go from the outerwear space into the, into the hip hop. So we had Wu-Tang play two of our ASR parties. People were losing their minds. Cause Dang. it was like, How un, get, you don't, you know, you yeah. had like weird, weirdo shit. The world played, felt right. so far apart back right. then too, like um, to have access yeah. to, to yeah, get so, someone like that. So there's a dub jacket on the cover of Stone Crazy, the Beat Nuts Dang. album. Uh, less, I think less is wearing yeah. it. Um, you know, and we just do stuff like that. And they were totally cool with giving me like, not even a budget. They just be like, okay, yeah, here's Take send them a need. box. Yeah. And then, um, Yasin and I grew up down the street from each other. So we knew each other from when we were kids. So I'd send stuff to him. Um, that's how there's, and then later, that's how there's alpha stuff in the Miss Fat Booty video. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh. It just was, it was obvious to me as it was obvious to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. you're like, this is it. This is yeah. where, where I'm at. Yeah. Um, how come nobody's doing this? And yeah. all of a sudden there's brands that are doing it. And I don't know that we were the first, but like it was a deliberate yeah. thing. You know, we all liked hip hop. We all like saw where that industry wasn't paying attention mm-hmm. and we just f- filled in the gaps. So I'm sitting in, I'm sitting in Synergy Sorry. one day and I'm like a skate, I'm like the shop rat, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm there every day. I know, I know who all the reps are, you know, they're all like, you, you know what the skate shop, skate reps look like back then. Yeah. And then <laughs> one day there's these three brothers, dreads, they show up to the shop and they knew Steve, my old, my, the shop owner, who's my old head and, right. and big brother. And I'm like these guys aren't from here. Mm. And like, you know, I see them looking and they're, they're looking through catalogs and stuff. And, um, and then the, the guys like, I'm, you know, I'm the little kid eventually is going to pay attention to me. And he, right. and he gives me this big yellow sticker and I'm like, what is this? And it's an A and a pound. Right. And then, it, and it, Steve introduces me. These are, um, yeah, I forget the gentleman's name. Obviously, however many years ago, but he's like, they're they're reps for a company called um, Alpha Numeric. Crazy. And I was like, do you remember who your sales reps were back then? I'm trying to think of that dreads. It might have been. I mean, it, it could have been. They might not have even been the reps. It could have been Salema and Damon Morris. Maybe. Who both had dreads. Yeah. Damon was the team manager. Um, and Cause Steve th- was very much, um, Steve was I'm hella cool. Think. It probably, what they probably weren't even reps to be honest. Cause Steve was hella cool with Stevie, with Josh, right. um, uh, Nino, yeah. Steve and Nino are yeah. really good friends. So if they were, if I were to guess they were cool with Nino back then. Right. And then Nino told him to go check out their man, Which Steve. Which is possible too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they could have just been making a road trip and just, you know, yeah. checking stuff out. You know who ended up becoming a rep for Alpha was Ned Brown, Peanut Brown. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. Um, and I was, again, fanning out, like, because, you know, he's the, another East Coast OG, like, um, but. How does, how, uh, so for, for you at that point, when you're, you're, you're kicking ass in dub and drawers in DC, how does the opportunity to then, and how do you find internally the space to, to take that leap and start that new venture? So before I bounced from Mecca to go work for Ken and Damon, um, Bird was sending me shoes and this, the guy that, was responsible for a gentleman named Michael Esco, who was also a mentor to me, uh, in the garment space. He, his company, international news was a holding company for mm-hmm. Mecca. And there was, a another brother that was there that was working, who was kind of a wild card, really talented dude, but just like a lot of attitude. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he was like, Mike was like, yeah, I, um, 
we somebody had split. I forget who. Oh, the brothers that started Mecca had split to go start a Nietzsche. And that's when I mm. came in to work there because they left. Uh, and a guy named Phil Pabone, who used to manage the Jungle Brothers, right. was the marketing director. And he's like, we're leaving, but they need people. You should come in. So anyway, I forgot. Later, somebody else splits another CD or whatever. And so Mike's like, I'm going to make this other guy the creative director. He's like, you're better suited. But I just have this thing where I really wanted this guy to like... Uh, he's got a lot of potential and I think uh. he could really do it. And I, it's like a, it's like a challenge, like a two way challenge. And I was like, all right. Yeah. I like kind of gave him the John Belushi face. Yeah. Like, okay. I guess like, <laughs> whatever sense that makes, yeah. but I get it. Um, and then the dub and drawers thing came up and I was like, yo, like, like almost a day after. Right. And I was like, I, I think I'm going to go do this thing in California with my buddies. And he was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's really, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, kind of like a little condescending. Yeah, yeah. Because he was like, you know, basically like, like oh, good luck, with, with, good luck with that. No, like nah. more like, oh, with your little boys in the um in their little skateboard warehouse oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, they have three warehouses that are each one that's bigger than your one. Yeah, like, what are you yeah. bucking <laughs> out? Like, um, uh. but he's like, but I still respected him a lot. Yeah. Like he'd really made a lot of time, like to like show you the ropes and like, and, uh, he was also like, if you're the senior designer or, or creative director, you've got to be the first at the trade show booth and the last to leave at trade shows. And you need to walk through, you need to walk the sales team through every piece so that they're not free bowling, like mm -hmm. trying to describe. So like really like, was about professionalism. Yeah. I learned a lot of that from him. But anyway, so he's like, promise me that we'll do something in the future. Cut to uh, a few years later, my friend, Bobby Joseph. Do you know Bobby Joseph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Bobby's still yeah. there. And uh, he hits me. He's like, Mike wanted me to hit you up because remember you guys said uh, you'd work together yeah. again. And I was like, well, he said, promise me we'll work together again. I was like, whatever. Um, I was like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, well, cause I've been all of a sudden there was more dub and drawer stuff in the source than there was Mecca stuff. Yeah. Cause I was just uh, sending stuff back home, yeah. whether it be candid photos of somebody on the road. Mm -hmm. And they were like, how are you, how are you doing this? I'm like, same way you're doing it. Yeah. Just, I have, I have people that trust me more and I don't know. You need to jump through hoops to get it done. Yeah. So he's like, do you have a brand idea? And I'd, I had thought about alphanumeric when I was at Mecca. Yeah. Um, I was just sitting on it. You had and the then, name already queued up yeah. and all? Yeah. No, that's it. Um, I'd, I literally had the name while I was at Mecca. Yeah. And it was just sitting there. And it was all the stuff, again, that I wanted to do at Dub. Or, sorry, wanted to do at Mecca. And then some of the stuff, like I wanted to make jeans for Dub. And in retrospect, it wouldn't have been a good idea. Uh -huh. I thought it was well, young me thought it was a good idea to make uh -huh. jeans for dub. And I made, there's a picture of Clyde wearing these like carpenter jeans that I got uh -huh. made in the sample room. Um, and again, like I said, a young me thought it was a good idea, yeah. but it didn't need to be done. So I just took all the stuff that I wanted to do in all the years for working for all those companies. And again, I got to do 99% of the stuff I wanted to do at dub this was just one of them. Like, and it was a handful of those things that I was like, I want to do this. I want to make a, like an all inclusive youth lifestyle brand. So it's skateboarding, obviously uh -huh. snowboarding, surfing, import tuning, which yeah. I had discovered while living in, in, in California, mostly from the kids that worked in the warehouse at circus. At and that George. era too, that, it, that shit was, oh, it was cracking. spot on. And like all these kids that like, that's what I did with the Be alpha sticker. I had, I had a little car. shitty four door Fuck yeah. sedan, yeah. a little civic and put it on the side. Like as if like Dave Ross going to make my car fast. Persuay had like all those dudes had civics, like half the pros out there had like civics with nitrous and uh -huh. like, you know, slam cars. And I, I still don't know a lot about that world. Like, yeah. Um, but I saw that it was adjacent and it was intertwined. Yeah, Kane totally, Gale yeah. was a big import tuner yeah. nerd. Like a lot of dudes, Alf yeah. and Alf was Ken Block's roommate yeah. at the time. So I would just see all these cars and it didn't, you didn't see that in Brooklyn. 
Nah, you know what I mean? I, yeah. And I'd be driving with Dave and he'd be like, he had this little switch on his little gear, you know, on his man. And just, he'd be like, you ready? Yeah. And I'd be like, all right. And you're like, and I was like, yeah. yo, I get it. It's the same adrenaline rush. Yeah. So, um, skateboarding, snowboarding, surfing, BMX, import tuning. And those were what we focused on. And then just all the shit that you would want to wear. Yeah. Like we made selvage denim using like a couple Japanese mills. Yeah. It was Hong Kong produced, but like we just kind of tried to do all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and cause my frustration was the garment industry would try to create all these categories for younger people. And it's usually a bunch of older dudes that weren't plugged in. Mm. So I was like, you can do all this stuff. Um, and Volcom was doing it to a different degree at that point in time, but it was more of the punk rock anti-establishment, yeah. fuck you, mom, fuck you, dad brand. Yeah. And still one of my favorite brands from an ethos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and later from a design dis- uh, perspective, they're just big. So a lot of people don't look at them yeah. that way. Um, but yeah, so Mike, Bobby's like, yo, you, you guys need to talk. So Mike and I get on the phone. He's like, you're ready to do your thing. And I was like, I am. And I knew exactly who I wanted to like put together. Um, we grabbed Russ, um, yeah. Reem, Russell Winfield. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Jones, yeah. Spencer, who I, you know, already had yeah, a relationship yeah. with, um, Jerry Bagley, um, uh, Jeremy Bay from Albany, uh-huh. um, Jamie Reyes. Yeah. Jamie's a shit. Um, Akko and Atiba shot the, or Akko or Atiba shot the first ads. Yeah. Akko used to do all the copywriting. Omar shot all the ads or, or <laughs> creative directed all the ads. Um, were people, were skaters, like, uh, trying to think, the, I oh, Kenny always, Hughes. Kenny, yeah. Try, Kenny was, Kenny uh, repped it really sorry, well. Forrest Kirby. Forrest did, um, yeah. Sorry, I don't want to leave people out. Nice. People get Len Higa, um, Appleyard Road for yeah. us for a little while. Um, damn. That's what I was going to ask you. Were cats just, cat, it seemed like, I was like, oh, cats are jumping off the ship of whatever they got going on to, to come skate for this. Cause it was, it's like you said, you're like, if you, you know, it's like looking at drawers. You're like, finally, somebody's making something for me. Yeah. Right. Like somebody's paying attention. Right. Like, um, especially you have somebody fly like Scott Johnson rocking drawers. You're yeah. like, Oh, just a rap. Like, yeah. Cause he knows how to dress, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it was just like, we're just making the other end. It doesn't, not everything. And obviously I, um, I love, I've always loved hip hop and punk rock uh-huh. collectively. Um, but it seemed like 90% of what was being sold to us clothing wise was like Orange County, like punk rock yeah, yeah. aesthetic. Gotcha. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like, no, this, you got the Stevies of the world, the yeah, you, the me yeah. at the time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and so just making what we thought or what we wanted yeah. really, um, so yeah, people were tripping kind of. I, yeah. Um, I, I was like, I bet you guys don't even tell them their sponsors. Right. They're, they're yeah. quitting. <laughs> and right. They're like Forrest. Did I mention Forrest? Curry? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Danny Wallace was yeah. an am. Danny's the man. Um, I still talk to Danny here and there. Salemo was marketing director. Then later Iron Mike flow. Do you know Sean Baravetto that used to work at, at SB? Uh, not off top. No. He was at Pacific drive and then he ended up becoming a sales dude. Mirko was the sales yeah. manager. Um, we had like a tight crew. Like Man. it was dope. Um, yeah. The it was, ads it was were a really incredible. Good time. I used to trip on the ads. I'm like, man, this, them shits, these ads look like they're very expensive to produce. No, like, they were super yeah. cheap. We would just yeah. be like somebody, you know, either Akko or Tiba or D-Dubs would be like, or Iron Mike would be like, find some school. I think one of the schools was Danny Wallace's high school and he knew somebody there. He's like, yo, can you let us use the, could be wrong. Yeah. So, um, and then Omar would, 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 uh, would build all that out. Get out of here. Yeah. It was dope. We had yeah. a good time, man. It was, uh, yeah, it was dope. It's a special, special thing. It's like, it's been fun. That's a sh- I was sending you the stuff is like to go, go on like my like eBay hunts and like finding like, 
You know, I tripped because the kids that were like skate, I, I this is when I knew it was really good. Kids that were like, weren't skaters, weren't snowboarders, like showing up to high school with it. So I knew they were paying attention to us. Right. And then they were figuring out where to go get it. You know, and that's, uh, that would be the, like the coolest thing to yeah. me. Like my whole thing was like, you know, not everybody will get it. But hopefully the ones that do are the yeah. right kids. If you, you know, not yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. be like elitist, but, um, that would always make me really psyched when I saw that, you know, when yeah. I knew the kid wasn't like a BMX or a yeah. skater or, you know, a snowboarder. I wanted like to be kid. like that. Yeah. Um, um, for sure. That's a really good point. Dude, I'd pull up to love with that, with that red four door civic, with that big ass alpha sticker on the side. And they'd just be looking at me like, you're a crazy ass kid. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. love that. Thank uh, you, man. And I would buy it all from the shop. I, th- I think I sent you clips. It's like I'm, the first yeah. time I met like a real filmer, this guy, Mark Brandstetter. And like the first day I went out with him, like we probably, I was so excited just to be filming with a, like a, a pro filmer. Right. You know, he's got like the VX. And I probably got like 10 clips that day, all in, all in that same graphic. That's tea, dope. You know, so. I forgot to say one of the coolest things about working for Ken Damon when I, I had a hard time breaking it to them because they were, they were super cool to me. Just yeah. as they became really good friends. They were like, do you need any resources? Oh, that's they amazing. straight up yeah. asked me like, and I was like, you understand I'm going to be competing with you yeah. in some spaces. And they're like, we need, we need that. That's how you grow an industry. They were like straight up asked me if I needed any like resources or help with anything, which was fucking super cool to me. Those two, I didn't meet, I think I passed Ken Block a couple of times in life. And then Damon had the chance to meet just recently. Right. But those guys, they come off to me as if they bring people in so that those people can graduate, not bring people in. So their careers stop at whatever it is oh, they're yeah. doing with them. You know, like that's a terrible way. The, the latter is like thinking like if someone you hire them and if they want to leave and fuck right. them there, that, you yeah. know, like that's incredible. And I, I see the way Damon speaks about you um, socially. And it's like, yo, that that's, that's what you want. That to me, that's a sign of a good leader. Yeah. You know, if you yes. graduate people to them, confident in you know. himself, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not like, you know, there was no, no little dick energy or yeah. anywhere. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. was very like confident and secure, like in their relationships, like, yo, yeah. like go for it. And so, which, you know, you think this is the right thing, get it. Like, cause well, a lot of people are like, ah, no, nah, I don't, don't you, outshine me in my yeah. own place. Or, I've seen it that. was nothing like that. Man. It was always like, we are a collective I and I never thought about it like that. Like I was like, it's all about us. Yeah. Like we straight up would work. It'd be like, you'd be like, Oh shit. It's uh, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock and you wouldn't be tripping because we were getting stuff done. The yeah. sense of accomplishment there was incredible. You weren't like working late to meet a deadline. You were working late because you were like in the zone, yeah. which is two very different things. You want to be there. Right. You're you hyped. do that. Yeah. And because you're seeing the shit get done way faster than anywhere else yeah. you get it done. Like we got our samples back, like the, their Korean the shoe operation was crazy. Yo, like, that's what I always wonder. I'm like, years later, I worked for Lucci with Gourmet and mm-hmm. seeing how hard shoe manufacturing is. Right. And then I'm looking back and I'm like, yo, DC had like every season they would have, it looks like 10 different, 15 different molds going and, and yeah. uppers and outsoles. And I'm like, yo, what kind of liberty and freedom did they have in these right. fucking factories well, back they, then? They had you know. investment. They had, they had, actually, I shouldn't, I don't know if I'm saying, but, but they the had. Bi- the, but the business must have, was good enough it was to good. support. It was good. Them like, having that type yeah. of, that type of flexibility and, is And there was of. nothing else. I mean, if you think about it, that's when dad vans were invented. Yeah. Because vans was like, what do we do? Nobody wants vulcanized shoes oh, anymore. Yeah. And they were trying to make these weird, like yeah. things that they thought might look like DCs. That like instead crazy. of just being bands, <laughs> like it was all reactionary yeah. to what DC was doing. Yeah. And then, you know, shortly after Nike finances, Savier, like, mm-hmm. and they have like great riders, but it's a dumb, yeah. excuse me. I'm sure some it's people okay. would argue, but I didn't like the product, but, um, instead of just diving in. And then finally they had to hired skateboarders to build their yeah. skateboard program that, you know, um, your, 
your SB, I, and I like I, I was very much a. It's fan not an of, SB or dunk. It's just a dunk. It's so not an SB. I was very it's much. A, I thought I knew so much about you know I followed SB, you know from the gates. I worked you know I was one of Ubik's first hires in Philly, and I was like, man, when did this Alpha Dunk come out? It came out so. The crazy thing is my stint at Alpha is really short. I'm only there for three years. And so the shoe, if you look inside the tongue, it's 99. It's pre-SB. It's 99 or 2000. It's not 2000. It's 99, I'm pretty sure. So Pro uh, B? Then they do like a Pro B? I think it's Pro B or something like that. Um, And basically they had Drew Greer had rebuilt this thing um he'd done the wu-tang dunk uh-huh. and then he was bringing skate dudes around alpha to be like hey like maybe you guys should do a thing together yeah. and i originally wanted to do a wildwood i wanted to do an uh, acg no way, damn, yeah. um and then um drew brought a low top dunk with him he was in town for asr and he brought a low top dunk and i was like yo we used to skate in dunks all the time. I didn't remember low top dunks uh-huh. though. I actually in the in the the video with the the interview with um uh with Talib, I actually say that there was no such mm. thing as a low top dunk. There actually was. Mm. I just didn't remember it. But I do remember that we used to get the dunks failed at market because mm-hmm. they were too expensive and they were like kind of like bootleg Jordans. Yeah. yeah. Right. When they were first came out. So we would get them for cheap and models. Like they were like zip tied together. Yeah. Those like white zip ties with yeah, the little yeah, beads yeah. on them. Yeah. Like, um, because they were too expensive and they just didn't end up selling. And then they sold them for cheap because they weren't Jordans. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yo, that that's the shoe. That's what you need to fuck with for skateboarding. Um, let's do a dunk. The shit that I got hot about is that Jesse Leva, so I build a tech pack and the, the, the hot thing in apparel at the time was uh, 3D welds, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I'm like a rubber logo on the outside of 3D weld. We're making it at a sample factory. It comes back and it's a fucking embroidery. Uh, on where you ollie yeah, and I'm yeah. like nobody's gonna skate in this yeah. and it's only for the team I'm like this thing's gonna blow apart you're gonna look like you have a cotton ball yeah. glued to your sneaker uh, after the first ollie like immediately yeah. and then uh, I freak out I call Jesse Lave I'm like yo what the fuck da, 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 da. he's like I don't know what happened later this dude comes in an interview and he's like oh, I'm the first dude to put a 3D embroidery on a sneaker and I'm like uh, nah, motherfucker you're not gonna take my call out <laughs> no nah, he, he yeah. fucked up my shoe yeah. so, <laughs> that's yeah. why I don't like that shoe but uh, anyway yeah I'm 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 still I still hold a grudge that they put the, th- the 3D embroidery on it instead of my 3D weld yeah and it made me feel from a completely egocentric space that people would look at me like, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Like, why yeah. would somebody put a 3D embroidery where you ollie? Like, who would do that? Yeah. Because I definitely wasn't going to do that. Like, I was like, I'm going to make the sickest skate shoe ever. Yeah. Anyway, Those that's, that's my little, like, rant man. thing. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, like, that shit really, like, soured my, my, uh, my personal experience with it. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, no, for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, I know that it's become this iconic thing, but I'm still pissed. Yeah. Like, that's funny. Seb, do you know Seb from New Balance Numeric? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He made me a pair of those yeah. new joints with the rubber weld on it. Yeah. In the alpha colors just oh, for me. Sick. So it's you have a picture sick. of it? I'll send it to you. All right, right, please do. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But just because he knew, he, he, he and I are really good friends. Yeah. And he knows how hot I still, obviously I'm talking about it at age 53. Yeah. And I did it when I was. Man, some, 30, some 30. You know, things sit uh, with you, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it might seem like nothing to, you know, to everyone else, but especially for yourself, like people, especially with people like, you know, does people with design pedigrees like your right. like yourself those little things that i I've, I've got all the respect in the world for designers and i do feel like the designers don't designers never get the credit like real designers sure. never get the credit they fully deserve cuz they're the people that are actually making the shit that people everyone's a designer now right you right. go on you go on social media everyone's right. and they're not you know it's it's and even going back to what you're saying about Damon like i've worked at companies where like 
I knew I seen the guy doing the tech pack, doing right. the samples for the collaboration shoe. The shoe comes in, it's a success, a success. And, you know, as a marketing guy being like, yo, such and such made this incredible shoe. And then the boss being like, Jimmy, can we, you can right. you come to my office real quick? You know, like you, like I'm supposed to be the one getting that. Right. You know, like that's, yeah. That's my whack. design. You know, it's like, dude, yeah, 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 like, I don't know. Making shit is really, really hard yeah. in, in any degree. And, and when you're able to make really like cool, cool stuff, it's like, you know, I don't know. This yeah. is, I mean, it's a million year old thing we'll talk where. Oh, know, for sure. You see it all the time. I mean, that's like another thing, like, you know, there was always a very much we about, I try to do it with alpha as well. Like, was very we centric. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to take credit for anything. The the shoe thing later, because I solely did that, but like, or sorry, Drew and myself and Jesse and, and Darla put mm -hmm. that shoe together. But I did the colorway. I did, you know, like our colorways, mm -hmm. plural, um, and fabric call outs. But anyway, um, but at Alpha and at DC and dub and drawers, like everything was very like, it's like the Borg, you know what I yeah. mean? Like neither Ken nor Damon needed to like beat their chests. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I really tried to model my, you know, how my work ethic and how I worked with the team similar from that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And like, and everybody's appreciated. Everybody's important, yeah. you know, like, being the goalie is just as important as being like the forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like versus like everybody wanting to be like a star forward. Yeah. You know, it's like, yo, dude, the goal is like really fucking important. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I mean, even like you say, like the, I mean, dude, the lady in the sample room, like, you know, what, what importance she plays in like everyone, I come into work like you're when this factor was sitting right. right now and it's like, you know, the, the, the gentleman cruise that you met, yeah. he's the most important person here. Sure. I do. The, what I, what I do is fucking easy. Right. Like compared to what he's got to do, you know, or, think, or Letty that's finishing or Jared that's like, you know, yeah. but it's all, you know, and it's all relevant. Everything supports one another, but, um, yeah, design will always not you know, it's funny I'm, i have like other really good friends that, that are designers and like like if i post something they're like come on jimmy you're not good I'm like where's, where's my where's my you know and i'm like fuck my bad yeah you know? <laughs> uh, only i think only one project we ever worked on all of our anytime we do like collaborations here the majority of them are i, w I would have loved it for it to be alfred but it's generally alex aronovich right who alex and alfred work together hand right. in hand or at aesthetics um you know, but anytime we do projects in which I, you know, I never, I'm not the designer. I always have someone to do sure. it, you know, like you got to give that individual their, you know, their credit, you know, so. Agreed. Yeah, man. I was the design nerd. I love designing. Like, I really like, I think there's a passion, you know, it's the problem solving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, that's what I, uh, I dig on, like designing for a purpose. You never, oh. uh, over the years, any, have, have you ever gone down the paths with working directly with, uh, with one of the, like the monsters, the Nikes or the, and you've done work with Adidas. <laughs> yeah. I had a, I had a tragic collection oh, with no. Adidas. Yeah. I got invited to do this project. It was originals by originals. Uh -huh. So it wasn't just Adidas originals and it was, um, What's the dude's name? So it's Kazuki from uh, Fragment. Mm -hmm. And then what's the, the dude that does all the ready to wear, hid the wings on the Adidas? Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott, yeah. Um, so it's Jeremy Scott, Kazuki, and myself mm -hmm. were the originals by originals. And um, the cat that was running the program, like I was like, all right, well, I want to do, I'm a big like sci-fi nerd. Mm -hmm. So, um, Blade Runner is like one of my favorite movies. Oh, get out of here. And so 
stuff that looks old, but is tech. It was like a big thing for me. So what I wanted to do was do imagining, reimagining the 19, uh, 1933 Olympics, 36, Jesse Owens Mm -hmm. in Germany. Yeah. Forget which year, 30 something. Um, but reimagining the U S uh, track suits and like some of them wearing, are wearing like pleated wide leg pants with like what's called a Hollywood waist. So there's no waistband. Um, that it's like a, a wool gabardine, like really nice menswear stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also sporty kind of like contemporary Todd Snyder. Yeah. Right. But with tech fabrics, stuff that was like, you know, breathable yeah. and moisture wicking. Yeah. And like, so there's like, we've seen it. Ralph's done it a million times. Yeah. Like the chunky, like uh gray sweatshirt, raglan sleeve with just USA chenille on the front, yeah. you know, like, or felt let it like dash, like that sweatshirts and sweaters iconic, but that comes yeah. from there. So I wanted to do that. And then they were like, Oh, well, we thought you were going to be like the, the sneaker head all over print guy. Oh no. And I was like, and then I just kind of dipped into the space. I was like, dude, like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So they thought I was going to do like stuff that I'd kind of been doing at Mecca. Yeah. Right. So it's even reverting back t- even further. And then, um, I just I mean, got I'm like almost, frustrated. Yeah. Like, and then the, there's like weird stuff. Like I did a, I did a shoe that was supposed to have a crepe sole. And then they made it a fake, a faux crepe sole. And they're like, you can do whatever you want. And oh, yeah. That kind of got messed up. And then I did yeah, what a- What does a faux crepe sole look like? It's a, a crepe wrap. Okay. It, so it's a it's a cup sole. And then the top of it has a little lip where it's still the, the regular- Yeah, yeah. That cup sole that rubber. That it looks right. back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, you, we sampled it the right way. Yeah, and then no. you gave me this other sample and you said- that I have to do this one, you know? And I just kind of like, it was really, it was, it was difficult. Um, and I can belly, belly ache about it. And, you know, I'm sure that I could have figured out different ways to get through it, but I just kind of threw in the towel. I got real frustrated. Um, I did a, I did a, a, a saddle shoe that I really liked. And then somehow these dudes did one in Jordan colors so oh. red, black, and white. And I'm like, your Adidas, you yeah. kind of can't even do a red, <laughs> yeah, black, no, black yeah. and white t- shoe. Yeah. And now it's got my name on it. You know, and it looks like- And what like, was the initial colors you had sampled it in? It was uh, like a like a new buck tan yeah. with a blue saddle. Yeah. Like some saddle shoe yeah, shit. Yeah. You know I what I mean? Those like, too. That's sick. Um, and then they like, just wow. Like I was like, yo, what are you doing? Like, yeah. and then I just kind of checked out. And it sadly in retrospect- had I not checked out and just really like, I don't want to say manned up, but like sat and figured out how to finesse it. Yeah. It, it really could have, I mean, look at what that, cause that's where Jeremy Scott hits the streets. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kazuki's already said he's part of yeah. Fragment. And he's one of my favorite designers, like yeah. just that. And so also from an ego perspective, Jeremy Scott, I'm indifferent about, but I also yeah. appreciate yeah, right? yeah. Like dude's done, incredibly well. It's not my cup of tea. Right. It's not my thing, but like you have to respect it. Right. Like, um, but Kazuki had, I've been a fan for years and then I'm like, wow, my shit looks like trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, um, Oh, that's a bummer. It was, you know, and what was me, you know, I just wish I'd like approached the pushback in a different way because gotcha. I probably would have been in a different place. Hmm. You have a, there, there's a pretty iconic photo of you sitting with what I'm sure is probably a, a 10th of, of your sneaker collection. Um, and I'm sure there's some fragment stuff in there. Oh yeah. HTM shit and wovens and yeah. all those air, like that, that era of sneaker to me is like, so, so, so special. Um, that was really when I was like, yeah. You know, I collected wovens. I collected air riffs for like my riffs shit. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I try to, my girl, I buy riffs for my girl. I wish so, I could step in like something is the whack machismo thing. I of got like you. being a, a boy. I'm like, why can't you just do it? You know, you love the <laughs> shoe, you know, but wovens, no, wovens all day. Like early foam posits. Uh-huh. Um, what else? 
most of that stuff. All that, yeah, all that like super experimental space. The wovens, I love. Was that the shoe? Like to me, when I think of like what the pinnacle of like shoe culture is, like the the woven is always like to me. It doesn't. Yeah. That's that's the end all be all. Right. And then does, um, does that hit the same way with you? Yeah. What's the joint with the? It's got the hard plastic lace loops. Oh yeah. And everything is, um, and then a hard plastic toe bumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Why am I drawing a blank on that? Everything else is you like have, it's, sublimated it's, spandex. Yeah, it's in the back. It's got uh, like lightning bolt. Like, why are, why are we drawing a blank I on forgot this? the name of it. Like right there. And then after that, it, it is really when I kind of got disinterested. Yeah, you know, so no, like, for sure. Yeah. And um, this one right here. I told my friend Randy. What the fuck? Why are yeah, those? Why can't we I forgot what those that? are called. Um, uh, this is terrible. I still have those Mew Mews. They're going to be like, you guys aren't though, real sneakerheads. You can't wearing. think of that name. <laughs> Dude, the Jordan, that Jordan trainer, the trainer or whatever, like yeah. that's extremely slept on. Dude, the Kobe's, I keep trying to tell my, someone. The Porsche, Porsche design yeah. Kobe's or Audi. Was it Someone Porsche just sent my daughter a pair of them. And like, I'm trying, I've, I think I have like the, I think it's up to like 50 bucks. Me trying to bribe her to wear them. <laughs> And she still won't step in them. And I'm okay. like, do it for she's volleyball. She's just not into them. Yeah, she's just not oh. into them. She just loves Chuck Taylors. But I think okay. that's that's pretty rad. Right. Um, but I'm like, put the fucking Kobe's on. That's like, all I drink is Coca-Cola. You're trying to get me to drink uh, like, uh-huh. like, like Pineapple Fago or some weird, obs- you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you're like, that's not even, it's not even Cherry Coke, dad. Man. Yeah. I, oh. You know, it's, it's now that I'm looking at this, man, I, I, I Googled it. Uh, and obviously the Instagram search, a lot of great photos of you. You with Harold. Lee Clyde and Harold. I think we were all on Zoo at that point. Yeah. Salad taking yep. us all yep. to Zoo. Um, let me That's see. There's amazing. some great ones in here, man. This photo of you and Keith. <laughs> uh, that was my dude, man. Yeah. A lot uh, of people like, you know, it's, I feel like a lot of the, I feel very lucky and I don't care on the time period, but like a lot of people whom I've really looked up to over the years I haven't known you cats back in the day. Like I, I've only Keith, I only met a year or two prior to him passing. Right. Um, you know, like a lot, you know, a lot of, but I always feel so lucky and I'm thankful which for, you know, you taking the time out to come here today sure, and, man. and share this stuff, man. Cause honestly, it's like, you guys are the people I, the space is so special, so special to me because of you guys. And, um, you know, and, I will always try to tie back um, that perspective and, and homage to, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Right. You know? Thanks. I, I think, you know, it's that, and, and Jim the, is the first person I ever heard say, thank you, skateboarding. And it might've come from someplace uh-huh. else. Right. Um, and I forgot who said skateboard, skateboarding owes you nothing, but you owe skateboarding Jake a lot. Phelps, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Right. But like, there really is a thing in the culture of skateboarding where people, it's like written in, it's like, yo man, like you're supposed to pass the baton. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to make the time, you know what I mean? Like, um, and like, these are lifelong friendships, yeah. whether they start today, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you meet somebody that's a skateboarder, you're probably going to know them when you're on your deathbed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, and people really look out the skateboarding community looks the fuck out yeah. like, and always has yeah. before the internet. Like yeah. it's not just an internet phenomenon. Skateboarding like really takes care of its own. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, like, I'm grateful for, for meeting you that we met yeah. because we're skateboarders. Yeah. yeah. We're into other things, but ultimately like the defining connector is yeah. skateboarding. Right. That, that's, um, that, that's another thing I was thinking about earlier is like, uh, you, with you coming from skate, but still being able to, to, to put your toes in the pool of so many things outside of skate. That's something that took me years to get, others around me to understand my interest in it. Right. And, and, you know, I always looked at it like, yo, I'm taking skateboarding to places that it wouldn't be. And, and would be butthurt when people didn't accept that the way that I have. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's what I always really liked about you. And, and, you know, and as I learned more is like, 
that's something I feel like you you did really, really well over the years and continue to do, you know, Thank even you. still to this day. Thanks. So it's like carrying that torch. I think it's just looking you know. through things as, the uh, you know, it's like, you know, we we're talking about before camera roll, right? Like we look at things different. Yeah. And so I think, I think I saw Pharrell mention it. I know I've mentioned it before, like, you know, the way he, he, I think he tried to attribute the way he looks at music is different because he was a skateboarder. Yeah. Um, is it raining again? What the fuck? Crazy. Um, that perspective. But the perspective is different. It's the yeah. way, you, you know, you, somebody just sees a marble, um, you know, a marble planter. Yeah. And you're like, I, I got back lip, yeah, I got yeah, back yeah. tail, yeah, I got 50, 50, I got, you know, feeble, you know, whatever yeah. you could, you're rattling off the direction that you're going to come at it from, yeah. you know, you're, and somebody's like, Oh, it's a really beautiful planner. Just a planner. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, a curb cut, yeah. you know, a driveway bump, like, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. A, a manhole cover. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, remember the first time you ollied over a manhole cover? Yeah. Like it sounds corny now in today's yeah. world, but like, that was a big deal when you're first starting skateboarding. I remember but, years ago, I was skating university of Penn. It's Ivy League school. Right. They had just built this little courtyard and this lady had come out and she's giving me a hard time about skating. The You know, it's a bunch of stairs stacked mm -hmm. and we're just skating the inside one. And I had asked her, I'm like, you're, you're a professor here? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, it's mind blowing to me that you're a professor at an Ivy League university and you can't accept or appreciate the fact that someone's utilizing this just edge of cement. Sure. You know, what else is you're going to walk up it? No one's walking up these things. Right. No one's sitting here. If right. they sit on it, they're at least they're utilizing the same way that I am with my skateboard. But I just was like, mine, you know, I don't know. That sounds crazy to say out loud, but like, that's where, that's how I thought like, well, you're, you're, you're supposed to be a professor, one of the most progressive institutions in this country that's right. educating other human beings right. that are supposed to be equally as smart as you. And you're mad about me using this cement edge, right. you know, but that's a yeah, small minds. Yeah. It doesn't just cause you're smart. doesn't mean you have a broad mind, like a broad mind. Yeah. I got a question. Did you, uh, did you ever skate with Serge? Turn, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, Serge and those guys were, they were, you know, I did, yes, once or twice where, like, my older friends would take me to love. Okay. As, but it was literally just as, you know, Rick, the Rick, Serge, and Matt era was, like, literally just coming to an end. Got you. But I, I was fortunate to see those guys skate at love, and, um, you know, those were, like, you know... I, f I knew who Roger was right. because of he's, them, you right. know, like them. He's their OG. Them flying the flag for Roger. Right. And then, um, you know, Serge is still skating to this day. Matt was probably one of the best skateboarders ever. You know, Rick. Um, I didn't know. I, I only knew Matt, but I was, Serge, I really like watch yeah, skateboarding. Like yeah. he's like a powerful skateboarder, yeah. as Rick was. I, I never knew him either, but I was just curious. Yeah. That whole zoo into Illuminati. And Silver Star. And Silver yeah. Star. I thought that was a really cool thing. For sure, happening, yeah. Um, that people don't talk about Illuminati or Silver I Star. I know, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Zoo's got such a gnarly history. Yeah. Was Zoo your first board sponsor? Uh, No, Aesthetics was. was Sal. Okay. Yeah, Dope. so. That's right. I Sorry, hounded I Kevin Taylor. And, and then I just made Kevin skate with me every day. Like <laughs> and he, even when he didn't want to, but Ke right. Kev was a skate rat. So when Stevie and Josh weren't skating, eventually I would get done school and just go knock on Kev's door. I found out where he lived at Dope. and Kev would sleep till like two in the afternoon. So right. I generally would wake him up and then we'd go skate a street spot and then go to love at like five when, the, when the park rangers Sweet. left. And I just like eventually forced him to give my tape to Sal. Luckily Clyde didn't, Oh, record over it with the OMT raps. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Sal goes, I'm going to send you to California, Jimmy, to stay with Clyde for a week. If, if Cl at the end of the week, if Clyde don't want to kill you, you're on the team. Amazing. And it was the best week 
of my of like one of my of my lives and me not for nothing me and Clyde had a little moment as of recent and when I had reached out to him to have a conversation about what we were dealing with uh, that was one of the first things I referenced I'm like Clyde I, I you know when I think about our relationship and how special it is it goes back to totally. you know December it was December 2001 because I remember no one was on the plane right you know no one was flying at that point and I'm like, yo, I had the best week of my life. We fucking, we watched like who got the hookup like 50 times, <laughs> you know, like it was like one of them and traded like mixtapes. And, um, so, and then from there, Sal was stuck with me. And then cool. when Lucci and Sal went to zoo, they took us over there. So, and, uh, yeah, I, I owe those guys forever, you know. Did you so. and Clyde pass your shit up? Yeah, absolutely. Right, cool. Yeah, for 1,000%. So, yeah, yeah. You know, and just so. understanding where his headspace is sure. at and, and vice versa and- you know, I think those friendships that you have that mean something to you, you know, it's, I don't know when you, it's hard. It's like, especially as we get older, we're all kind of stuck in our own ways and sure. it's, it's very easy. I've seen it, you know, it's easy to stay mad, but I, I'm to the point where it's like, if I care about someone, I, I don't even give a fuck. I'll apologize. Even if in my heart of hearts, I know I didn't do anything wrong. Not saying that yeah. situation, but I just... I'd much rather find a resolve and, and patch and move forward with people that mean something to me than God forbid you get a call the next day. And, yeah. you know, so. And that's, I mean, we're seeing so much of that now. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what's going on. People are just you know, fucking falling off left around. I'm glad you guys uh, patched it up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, um, even, yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing, you know, everything that you've dealt with as of late. Like I, I had, my mom went through um, a treatment that was, uh, 88, she got hepatitis C working in the hospital. Oh, wow. So bef there was a, there was a treatment that basically was the same effects as chemo. And I watched her go through that in middle school. So like, I know what that's like watching a loved one firsthand, right. you know? So for you sharing that, I was like, you know, that hit home with a lot of people. And I'm, I'm thankful that you're sitting here with well, us, you know? Thank you. So uh, it's, you uh, it was, uh, I think I'm just now, well, first of all, mom's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it was surreal. Like, um, and like, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I still have a girlfriend right now, but like, you know, like my friend Danica held it down. She would dip through, I have cats. So she would literally mm -hmm. like drop me off, drop me back off, you know, drop yeah. me off at, at, at uh, like, pick me up from chemo, drop me off from my crib, be like, do you need any groceries? And other than that, like she can, she's like deathly, yeah. allergic, like allergic to cats. But other than that, like I was just home, yeah. you know what I mean? Like for Delph. And it was, uh, I didn't, I think the latchkey kid thing, you, and being an only child, you, you dip into this like survival mode. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even have, like I'm just now processing a bunch of the shit yeah. that I went through. I bet. Um, I was too busy. Like, don't freak out. Yeah. Don't, you know, just do, what do we do? Do the research, figure out, you know, you know, and then you also get people like coming in left and right who yeah. are all well-meaning. Yeah. There's a lot of information being thrown at you. Oh uh, yeah. It's tough. So yeah. trying to like, um, but yeah, like I just like, just like, do what the doctors are saying, yeah. do you, you know, the juicing thing, a couple other things that people, I had to cross reference a lot of info. Mm -hmm. So I didn't end up doing the wrong things, yeah. but, um, like I literally am just now like able to think about how gnarly that whole shit mm -hmm. was. Um, cause it was just like, stay alive. There was yeah. a point in my chemo, like I think by like infusion eight, Cause they had told me at the beginning, they're like, all right, so all the levels are going to be up to 10 and we can, I was taking three different chemicals mm -hmm. um, and we can tweak them down depending on how you're feeling. And I just rocked with it. And yeah. they're like, man, you're doing great. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like I was at level 10 on each one. And then by infusion eight, I was like, I think I'm going to die. Can we stop this? And they were like, well, what's going on? And I told them the side effects and how I was feeling. And they're like, Oh yeah, we don't you remember? We yeah. said you can, 
we can lower some yeah. of the doses. So they put this one at like 50%. And I was like, I've never wanted to like hug somebody yeah. and punch somebody in the throat, like at the same uh -huh. time, but it was partially my fault. Like yeah. they had told me, but I was just too busy. Like get I it done. Do yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And I forgot. Yeah. Um, plus you get what's called uh chemo brain. That's like a real thing. It's like people talk about COVID brain. Like, huh. like I get, especially now, like if you notice there's certain times I'll pause cause I'm thinking for yeah. thinking about a word. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to like, I'll be fine. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's a real last thing. It's bugged out. Um, so you get a little scatterbrained here and there and you're just trying to like focus on like yeah. getting up in the morning, sitting in the sun for a little while. Yeah. Like, you know, were you able to, were you physically able to skate throughout all this no, or go push around? I haven't around skated or? in two years. Get I'm going to go here. skate this weekend. Right. So what happened toward, after infusion eight. And I'm sorry if that's a stupid ass no, no, question. No, yeah, it's I not apologize. a stupid ass question. Cause it's part of, it's like Lance, right? Yeah. You look at Lance, he's like, all those dudes are like, I'm going to skate until I can't. Yeah. Like there's a lot of stuff I can't do. Like I, I can't get up over a bench anymore. Uh -huh. I can definitely go skate a curb. I can do that. But just, just the, being able to roll around with my boys uh -huh. um, or just myself is a big deal. Yeah. Like it's, it's really interesting. Like yeah, yeah. It has a lot to do with your mental health and just taking care of yourself. Like I put on a bunch of weight cause I'm not skating. Mm. That sounds funny. But so what happened is toward the end of chemo, it, I didn't have it for the first three quarters of it. And then overnight, damn near, I got uh, neuropathy in my hands and my feet, which means that your hands and feet are really numb and you uh -huh. get like pins and needles. And for a while I couldn't feel my feet. Oh, good. You know, idea. when you're like, yeah, yeah. your feet fall asleep yeah, and you yeah, stand yeah, yeah. up and then you get those yeah, sharp, that's insane weird feeling. Yeah. Imagine that like all day, every day. Oh man. So, um, my oncologist has me on this stuff called, um, alpha lipoic acid, which is supposed to help and so I'm just at a point where I feel I can feel my feet enough mm -hmm. that I'm confident in being able to push around. Gotcha. So I'm going to go skate this weekend. Just actually. push, just push, just push. And that's all. I might get some slabbies yeah. in. We'll see. Yeah. Depending. I'll probably get a little ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, maybe some board slides. I don't know, but I, I it, it, it freaked me out. It's really weird, man. Yeah. Like for the first week and it just kicked in and I like got out of bed and I was walking like a baby deer. It was Man. crazy. Like it was like without yeah. exaggeration. Yeah. Um, and then I got, I started getting on the treadmill in my crib. Um, and like, you know, they're like circulation yeah. it helps. Um, so, cause you're just inactive. Man. You just kind of like, and some people, everybody's different. Everybody's chemo is different. Yeah. I've seen people who are like bodybuilders that are like getting their swole on while they have a port the same where, that's the insane, same place yeah. I had mine, but there might be taking different drugs or different, uh, different combinations yeah. of, of, where's the port at? If you don't mind me. It's in your chest. Okay. It's out now. All they right. took mine out. But, um, I remember my daughter, I mean, my daughter had hella, she went through two years of uh, pretty intense surgeries and she still has her, like scar. her scarf. She had a port. Yeah. Like, uh, the pick line. Yeah. 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 yeah and now. it goes up in your and neck. She's always like, dad, what's that? What's that scar from? I'm like, you see the scar on your belly? Yep. <laughs> That's it from I'm that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. I'm glad she's good. Yeah, I'm glad you're good. Thank you. Oh. Um, I wanna. I know we we've been talking for a minute. I got one last question. Sorry, and I know I go on tangents. Nah, nah. Come on. Uh, <laughs> what's the question? The question. This is the most open ended. You can't be wrong. Might actually be the dumbest question. But I think I love get hearing different people's perspective, and I think yours is probably the most uh will probably be the most accurate if not absolutely bullseye what is the start of streetwear okay um in your perspective in my I'm not perspective streetwear not, like, not like no yeah. so who was the, the brother that was on the show ivan yeah ivan yeah okay so He's not completely wrong, right? And I wasn't trying to say he was wrong. It's just a more complex thing than that. So For yeah, sure, the yeah. first brand to use the word 
was vision, yeah. right? Um, and that's, you know, 84, 84 yeah. vision street where it starts at 85, 86. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Um, people say that Stussy is the first streetwear brand, right? Yeah. But ultimately what it really is, is like Stussy was a surf brand. Yeah. It wasn't a streetwear brand. It was a surf brand that was influenced by high fashion, right? And it's funny yeah. how it's like a cyclical thing. Yeah, now. yeah. Um, there were, you know, people can argue, I mean, for a definitive brand, I would probably say Stussy is the first streetwear brand, not Vision Streetwear, even yeah. though street vision, Vision's the first person to use the word. Yeah. But a brand that is looked at, I actually pause. Let me stop that. Ralph Lauren's the first streetwear brand. Ralph Lauren. And it's not a streetwear brand. It's a brand that kids were rocking because they were boosting. Yeah. But you could say, um, so it's, I think it's such an amazing question, yo. It and now I'm fumbling over my own nah, words because nah. it's a really complex yeah. and it's nuanced so complex. question. Yeah. Um, on a broad scale, my definition of streetwear is cottage industry. It's like young kids with an entrepreneurial spirit yeah. that were tired of wearing Gap, tired of wearing. And the reason I say Ralph is Ralph developed its own subculture outside of what it was mm -hmm. intended for. Yeah. As did Susie. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's why I mentioned them. So some might be like, some people might like you're, you're contradicting yourself, yeah, yeah, but yeah. largely streetwear on a whole, I would say is young people with an entre entrepreneurial and creative spirit or creative and entrepreneurial spirit that don't want to wear what the status quo was. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's an irony in that to me now because the status quo is streetwear. And so like, how do you rebel against the status quo? Right. The status yeah. quo. So it's kind of becoming the antithesis of what it is. Yeah. The minute you have to line up for it, it's not what it was supposed to yeah. be, but it doesn't mean that it can't change. Yeah. Right. And I know that's like a weird nah. funky way of phrasing it, but I also know that I'm 53 years old. Yeah. Right. And to its credit, streetwear should always be, the lens of the youth. Yeah. So the way somebody's grandparents, you know, my mom's parents might've been talking about rock and roll or jazz. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like it's not for them. Yeah. Right. And so I'm not saying streetwear is not for me, but it's not made for me. It's yeah. made by young people for their peers. Yeah. So it, without trying to gatekeep it, it's gotta be whatever it's going to be. It's gotta yeah. be whatever the kids say it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. From a historical standpoint at the, the integers that I was at, I can define those spaces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, clearly, cause I was yeah, in yeah. those spaces yeah. at those times. Um, but contemporarily I just have to go like, you know, that's, it's for the kids and the yeah. kids are going to make it what they need it to be. Yeah. Cause it's, they're not making it for me. Yeah. You know, Oh, it's a funky old ass. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. we don't care. Uh -huh. And it's a trip. Like, I'm watching, I watched my nephew. Um, he was like, he lives in San Diego. His dad lives in New York. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go to New York. And he sends me, he's like, I need to get baggy jeans. Huh. And I'm like, I'm watching kids rocking like, you know, they've eBayed some old Sean John jeans uh -huh. or Jinko, and you've yeah, seen all that yeah, thing yeah, happen, yeah, right? Yeah, or sure, or yeah. even, you know, yeah. blind jeans or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I just sent him this old picture of Puba. Uh, with Jerbo's on. Yeah, yeah. And then I like Googled a bunch of like Jerbo's, 80s Jerbo or 90s Jerbo's, excuse me, from uh, eBay. And they're all like, he was showing these one jeans for like 400 bucks. And I was like, you get four pairs of these yeah. for, for that money. Um, so even that streetwear now, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it really is like, it starts with, I'm going to make some t-shirts that I want to see or whatever, maybe not yeah. t-shirts, whatever it is, a hip pack, you know, there's, there's so many facets mm -hmm. to it, but I'm going to make stuff for me and my crew. Right. Yeah. And that's the root, I guess, yeah. ultimately. So Sean was doing that for him and his crew and, you know, it turned into a thing. Ralph wasn't doing that. 
but kind of was because it was a niche. Yeah. Right. And then you get low lives and yeah, those dudes doing that whole thing. And it yeah. develops this whole life outside of what it's intended to be. But ultimately it's just, uh, young kids making stuff for them and their peers. Yeah. I like in that. the most pure yeah form right yeah. and we could go into all sorts of like his early urban wear street wear absolutely because yeah. it wasn't called urban yet yeah like i worked for april walker i was around uh carl like yeah. you know people were like oh this fucking weird black fonzie dude worked for april walker yeah. like yeah like she's a really good friend she's yeah, one yeah. of my mentors yeah. like i invented the name fat farm for yeah. russell simmons like um yeah. Walker wear. Whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but those brands were considered streetwear brands. Yeah. Or the Chronologically, the word urban brands didn't really start till 94, I 95. See. You know, really like when the Sean Johns of the world start to take off. Yeah. And that's even a little later. It's yeah. like Sean Johns, like 97, yeah. yeah. 90, no, 98. I guess, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, um, but you had FUBU, you had, you know, there's a, a lot and there's so many brands yeah. that came out because it's the entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. But I'm sure there'll be an argument in the comments section about what I'm saying. Nah, I'm kind yeah. of indifferent, but nah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I just love, I timeline mean, it's, is it's there. one of those questions, man, where I, I don't think anybody's wrong. Cause I think, like you said, it's, it's just based off of like, to me, whatever your introduction in that into that space is you're gonna i think i don't know i could be talking out loud or and incorrect but like you know i don't know i look at like the things that introduced me into it and you know just graphic t-shirts those little graphic t-shirt sure. companies but then i'm like yo there's there was you know there's things I mean, before that you know like limpies you know, yeah. was a skate brand which yeah. could be a streetwear brand Life's a beach. Yeah. With all the shit that gone's in them, you know. Yeah. Uh, Clebo's got that front side wall ride in those Life's a Beach oh, skull yeah, pants. Yeah. Like, now I'm pretty sure that's pre yeah. uh, streetwear, Vision Streetwear. Vision was around. Jimmy Z's? Jimmy's Jimmy. could be yeah, streetwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's pre Stussy. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but Stussy is the one that, like, past Jimmy's and past this, everybody adjacent to skate paid attention to Jimmy's because yeah. a lot of yeah. you know, pros wore it, but Stussy somehow found its way further out than anywhere else. Yeah. It, you know, it penetrated yeah. major metropolises, whereas Quicksilver hadn't really done that. Yeah. Those, those are still very, uh, suburban areas. So kids in New York, yeah. kids in Philly, kids in Boston, kids in Detroit and LA and San Francisco and San Diego are wearing Stussy kids yeah. in Paris. I would trip in when, when I was a kid, you could only get it at, I'd go to the, the only spot I, spot I knew had Stussy as a kid was when my mom would take me to ocean city, New Jersey for vacation sure. and like the janky surf shop yeah. had it, you know, like I didn't know, I didn't see any stores at the mall right. or anything. And you it know. was only surf and skate shops, yeah. really. And then um, years later, and they have this fucking banging skate program and stuff. And I'm like, well, shit, let me fall in line right. with what, you know, now it's the shit. Yeah. Uh, but that's a very so, open-ended question. I appreciate I you. I hope I did okay at nah, answering it. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot of different facets. It's something you could talk in, we could sure. talk in circles in. It's just, it's, it's interesting. I, when people... Like when people get upset, I get where they're coming from. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, it's everyone has their own interpretation to it. So. I just bug out when yeah. dudes weren't alive during the timeline. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and like you like, said, with context and you're like, dog, time. Like, yeah, context, yeah. timeline, uh, nuance. Yeah, like, yeah. Because everything happened for a reason within yeah. a certain period of time. And it's like, yo, dog, if you weren't there, like, don't, you know, yeah. we can guess about it but don't be like yo this yeah. was it yeah. like anyway yeah. that's just yeah. my own well shit it is uh six o'clock all right i gotta start heading back out. i gotta get but, uh dinner for the family probably 
And man, I, but, um, I truly, truly appreciate this. Uh, I appreciate you having. I know this was a this was a trek to get we out there. Like kick and, it, kick it outside of you know. Yeah, out, absolutely. Maybe go push around. Yeah. That be would be fun. awesome. Yeah, man. Keep rolling for sure. I don't think I ever stop skateboarding. Nah, man. Oh. Until I can't. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. You're the fucking man, yo. Thank you I so much, brother. Thanks for having me.